just a week ago. It was the Galaxy winning by two, so Scotland are out for their revenge today. The Galaxy are heading for the World Bowl. Scotland are playing for pride. But before we get to our game, let's find out what happened yesterday in Amsterdam when the Admirals took on the Cologne Centurions. And the atmosphere here at the Vault Stadion, absolutely terrific. Pretty close to a packed house once again. Beautiful sunshine, these fans enjoying it. And a few moments ago, Mike Jones had some last-minute words for his players. Let's endure. Most importantly, let's dare that we're going to play faster. Let's dare that we're going to be physical than they are. Let's dare, without a question, without a doubt, finish every play. Let's take a knee. Who dares wins? Well, Mike Jones has been a winner since taking over the Frankfurt Galaxy as head coach. Five and one his record, his team closing in on a place in the World Bowl. Under this most modest and unassuming of head coaches. Talking to him, you wouldn't know he played six or seven years in the NFL as a wide receiver and that he's done a terrific job over here in Europe. First for the Ryan Fire and now for the Frankfurt Galaxy. On the other sideline, of course, Jack Bicknell. The veteran former Barcelona Dragons head coach in his first year at Scotland and what a tough year it's been for the old campaigner. Cowboy Jack just hasn't really had the horses this year. So Lewis and Willis wait and we're underway in Frankfurt and it's a low squib kick that is fielded by Chris Edmonds, one of the tight ends who takes it all the way to the 44 yard line and that is not the start that uh, the Scottish claim was looking for Edmonds with a 13 yard return on that very weak kickoff and it's immediately given Frankfurt excellent field position and here comes JT O'Sullivan from the New Orleans Saints and they say of this guy he can beat you with his arms he can beat you with his legs oh multifaceted he can do a lot of things with the ball in his hands uh, running scrambling found an open receiver we'll see what he does today so first down they go out of the pro set. Skip Hicks, the former Washington Redskin, will look to get some tough yards inside, and that's a three-yard gain. It'll bring up a second down and seven. Frankfurt love to run the football, as we heard earlier, behind this big offensive line. Bruce and Venska, the German on the tackles, Dean Ingram and Tim Stuber, the interior lineman. Skip Hicks is in the backfield along with Corey McIntyre, Jason Willis and Derek Lewis, the wideouts, and Chad Hayes, primarily a blocking tight end. Second down and seven. And a little swing pass goes to Derek Lewis, who is stopped just at the halfway line. He'll pick up a uh, three yards before Alfonso Roundtree stops him. Well, let's take a look at this Scottish Claymore's number one ranked defense. Cedric Scott, Nick Easton, Alan Harper and Ivory McCoy, the big guys up front. JJ Jones, Jimmy McLean, who's had a terrific year, along with Ryan Myers, the linebackers. Roundtree and Franklin on the corners. Thomas Wright comes into the lineup at strong safety. And James Lewis moves from strong safety to free safety. We'll see if the Galaxy going to try to throw the football or run the football early on. They're doing a little bit of both. Well, they've thrown there, and they've completed a pass once again to Derek Lewis, who was one on one with Brad Franklin, and will pick up seven yards and a first down for the Galaxy. We've seen a lot of quick game that the Galaxy are trying to do early on a second down. It gets shorter yards for third down. They threw a little quick ball out to the sidelines. Cornerbacks are playing off. The receiver was able to get a couple yards. Now, third down, the cornerbacks playing off again. Let the receiver get the first down. So Lewis, who can also be dangerous on the end around that uh, the Galaxy like to run, he's actually carried the football 11 times this season. And he's had a couple of catches here. And O'Sullivan drops and then just dumps it off to Hicks. And Hicks uh, makes good positive yards. He'll pick up seven yards before he is tripped up. And uh, Skip Hicks, the former Washington Redskins, probably the most experienced running back NFL Europe has ever seen. Yeah, he definitely is. He's had a a successful career in the NFL. Came over to NFL Europe, said he wanted to improve on his game, break off some of the rust, being that he was out of football all of last year. You see him doing an excellent job over here this year. With that big blocking back in front of him, oh, Corey yeah. McIntyre. That always helps. I love Mac McIntyre. Here they go, I'm faking one of those end arounds, and now O'Sullivan will take off as well, and uh, that's what O'Sullivan can do. As a defense, you hate to see that. You have the double reverse stop, the quarterback hurts him with his feet. 15 yards before Jimmy McLean stopped him. 
and it's it's the wild card. Jack McNeil talks about this. They can scheme for everything else, but if this guy takes off, trouble. Right, he's a third dimension that you can't account for. You know you're going to stop the running back right here, then you stop the receivers. Next thing you know, you have to worry about the quarterback. It makes it even tougher. And a guy that can run with the football and run strong like that, I mean, what can you do to stop a guy like that? There's all sorts of stuff going on in that backfield there. And whether it was a busted play or whether it was designed, either way, it produced 15 yards and a first down. They're at the 25. Play action. O'Sullivan buys himself some time. Now Scott flashes him out of the pocket. And he just throws it away. Nobody there. And that's the, that's the sign of a maturing quarterback. Uh, in recent weeks, he's forced it occasionally, but that's what coaches will tell you. If it's not there, throw it away. Exactly. I've watched O'Sullivan the last uh, couple of days on film, and he's seen a couple of plays he want to try to force the ball in there and try to make a play. Just sit back. You have a great offense, and just let the game come to you. That, like you said, maturing is a process that he's going to go through. Throwing the ball away is one of those matur maturation processes. Drew Haddad, number two, comes in as the slot receiver now. Haddad burned the Claymore's on more than one occasion last week, and that's why they moved Lewis to free safety to try and uh, match up against Haddad. O'Sullivan looks in the end zone for Haddad, and a flag comes in as the receiver fell over, and Jimmy McLean was the man that had the coverage, and it's McLean who may hear his number called. Yes, he's going to hear his number called on this play. Uh, this is a tough call. You know, I'm always going to be biased toward the defensive players, but McLean got his hands on him a little bit, bumped Haddad. I knocked him off. When you 180 pounds, you're going against a guy that's 240 pounds. <laughs> it's going to look bigger than it is. You watch him, mother, drop to the middle section, and he has his cover two that running. And he's getting back to cover the slot receiver to take away that inside. Gets his hands on him, hits but her dad. You know it's going to be a penalty coming next. I think even you might have to agree that one was a flag. <laughs> well, <laughs> depend what day you catch me on. <laughs> Bottom line is first and goal for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Hicks is alone in the backfield. They got the two tight ends out as well. McIntyre's in there. They're bringing in the heavy mob. Edmonds is the motion man. Here goes Hicks. And Hicks gets close and he's in. Touchdown, Frankfurt. That's the way you start opening drive. Last week, Frankfurt came out their first opening drive. Uh, had a couple of penalties. Was stalled. Didn't get any points out of it. Today at home, they're coming out. First drive, take the ball 40, uh, 55 yards down the field. Touchdown. Skip Hicks with his sixth rushing touchdown of the season and his eighth altogether. And Corey McIntyre was there to help open up the hole as well, as he seems to have been all season long. So Frankfurt get good field position. They get a big penalty when they need it as well. And it sends out the veteran German Ralph Kleinman from just down the road in Cologne. He's been kicking for this team on and off ever since 1995. He's the number three all-time scorer in NFL Europe, and he tacks on the extra point. And Frankfurt, here in the sunshine, get the start they need. It's 7-0 to the Galaxy. If you watch Corey McIntyre on this play, him clear the path for Skip Hicks to get the touchdown. Uh, they were speaking highly of Corey McIntyre all week long. And you watch him on this play, take on the fullback, the linebacker, clear the way, Skip Hicks falls in for the touchdown. Great block, great run, Skip Hicks and Corey McIntyre working well together all year long. Six touchdowns for the former Washington Redskin. Now with the Cincinnati Bengals. And wouldn't you think that he'd like to take Corey McIntyre with him? Herb Haygood is one of the two return men for Scotland. And as we said earlier, he ripped one off in the fourth quarter last week to give Claymore's hope and bring him to within two points. But uh, time ran out on him. The man from Kansas City, optimistic of uh, repeating the trick here. It is hot and sunny today, Gat Darren. Already these guys are feeling the heat. Yeah, it is. But, you know, you want to play in conditions like this. Maybe 10 degrees less is perfect football conditions. But you can't complain about this, uh, this weather out here. And guys are going to be flying around all day. Hopefully no one gets dehydrated, not used to the sun. So Jamie Ream will kick off. Now, I wonder if he's been instructed to kick away from Haygood. Well, here he goes. Good end over end kick. He's going straight to Haygood, who fields at his own 12-yard line. And Haygood's found a hole once again, and here goes Haywood to midfield. Will history repeat still itself? Going. Will history repeat itself? No, they managed to drag him down, but another terrific return from Herm Haygood, 53 yards. Excellent return by Herm Haygood. And you know he's allocated by the Kansas City Chiefs, and he's going to be behind a, a pretty good guy out there in, in Kansas City and Dante Hall. You see him get the crease on the outside, break to the outside, great blocking by the Claymores. Uh, breaks a couple tackles and almost outruns the coverage. Excellent return, and that's the field position that the claimer is going to need to get something going. Yeah, this offense has had such a terrible time, but Haygood has at least given Nate Hibble a short field, and they're going with four wide receivers on. First down from Frankfurt's 37-yard line. 
So this is uh, a bold statement of intent from Jack McNeil, but they'll run out of it with Amar Galloway. Nothing doing there. Bobby Setzer in on the stop along with Mason Unk. Nate Hibble from the Cleveland Browns. It's been a tough season for him. Very tough season for him. And you can see the frustration on his face yesterday when we were talking to him. You know, he's been in a lot of successful programs. Uh, come from Oklahoma, playing in Cleveland where they're winning. Uh, it's tough for him to go through this process right now, but those things happen. It's all part of football. Yes, it it's is. It's all part of being a leader, which is what a quarterback's got to be. They will give Galloway two yards. So it's second down and eight. And here comes Galloway once again. And Galloway's found a little bit of a hole and will pick up close to first down yardage. Looks like he may just be short from where they've spotted that. But that'll bring up third down and long. And third down, third down and short. There's the offensive line. Marcus Ogden, the little brother of Jonathan Ogden. But I guess everyone's little compared to uh, Big John. Ahmad Galloway is in the backfield. Bellamy McCready and Haygood, the wideouts. Aaron Golladay, the tight end. But Haygood is the guy that might provide the spark. And Scott McCready, the leading receiver in NFL Europe. Yes, he is. McCready is the leading receiver. They say Bellamy is a playmaker. But you also see Haygood get his hands on the balls and make things happen. They've actually given him a first down. It was close. And Hibble will throw on first down. And he's got a man. And uh, it's DeAndrew Rubin that makes the catch of Asa Francis. And uh, this is looking good here early for Scotland. The defensive line of the Galaxy is its strength. Setzer and Jackson are fierce pass rushers. Franklin and Schecht do a lot of unsung work inside. The linebackers, Dustin Cohen, Mason Unk and Asa Francis coming in for the injured Sean Price. Linaris Alpage and Ahmad Brooks on corners. Chris Brown and Ricky Sharp at the safeties. And Setzer here, seven sacks on the season, but none last week against Scotland. First down. The Claymores looking to respond. And Hibble has seen the play clock. That's a smart um, play. If you, don't, if you don't have anything, call a timeout. You're in a position now to get at least three points. You don't want to make anything uh, bad happen now to get pushed back a little bit further. But it's a positive thing to see the Claymores. Then they came out with two runs. You know, I was talking to Mason Hunt, linebacker for the Galaxy. He said, I think they're going to come out and just throw the ball all over the field. Switched the game plans, came back, ran the ball two times, got positive yardage, and were able to get the first down on a, on a pass. Nate Hibble forced to take the um, the uh, timeout because that 35-second play clock ran down. It's 40 seconds in the NFL, of course. That's one of the key rule differences. Four points for a 50-yard field goal is, is the other one. But uh, it's amazing what a difference that five seconds makes. Oh, yeah, it definitely does. It really this, makes for more plays during the game. Uh, I want to say it speeds the game up a little bit. The thing that I'm most confused about is a four points for a 50-yard field goal. Now, I'm not too one that's a, high, a highly <laughs> spokesman for for field goals and everything for special teams, even though it's a great part of the game, but four yards for a 50-yard field goal uh, is a little bit much, to say, <laughs> to say the least. It's a little bit much. But it's, it's different rules, and you have to get adjusted to them, but it's good for this league. Well, the Galaxy players are trying to whip up these fans, and the jeering and the whistling has begun. That's one thing I love about the games over here in NFL. You have the whistles. You know, it brings more energy to the game and excitement. And there's certainly you know, energy in this stadium. And they know their football and they love their galaxy as well. First down, Scotland at Frankfurt's 16-yard line. McCready is in the slot. It's McCready that goes in motion. The dangerous Ron Bellamy is split wide right. And a bit of play action and Hibble will take off. He's found a seam and then is tripped up. Bobby Setzer read it all away. And Setzer's getting a, a lot of recognition for his pass rushing, but his, his identification of plays is something that impresses you. Bobby Setzer is a player that can do it all. You know, when you talk about multi-dimensional, talk about a defensive end that can do it all. He, you know, this play, he knows a bootleg. He stayed and kept his leverage, got off a block, and made a tackle on the quarterback, not allowing Hibble to sit back there in the pocket and, and find an open receiver. Hibble got a yard, and that was about it. Setzer, who is uh, celebrating his 28th birthday this week. You won't thank me for that. And father time catches us all out. Now, that was interesting. Corey Jackson moved way offside, and instead of calling for the snap, Hibble let him get back. Hibble steps up and is hit by Jackson. And Jackson makes him pay for that. You know, that's a play, a lot of veteran quarterback, Hibble's a young guy, but a veteran quarterback is one player who does that very well, Brett Favre, a quarterback for the Packers. Uh, once you see a guy jump off sides, the center actually will snap the ball, free play, go downfield and try to make something happen. You speak about these defensive ends, you watch Corey Jackson right here, the left defensive end, come off the block, keep fighting, 
against Ogden, one of their best tackles for the Claymores. Squeezes inside and gets Hibble for the sack. That's called a hustle play. But the hustle should have been from the uh, Claymore's offensive line. They should have got that snap off and called him in no man's land. Instead, it's the loss of three yards and a long third down coming up. And Jackson's putting some pressure on again. And Hibble has to step up, gets a block, and falls short of first down yardage. Ran into Chris Brown, who came up from safety. And that's going to be third down and three. And they will send out Rob Hart. The kicker for the Scottish Claymores. Well, that's a positive series, though, for the Claymores. A great return to get themselves in excellent field position. Uh, hopefully, they can get three points. NFL Europe's all-time leading point scorer, Rob Hart, will attempt a 28-yard field goal. With the bare foot. The snap is low, and it's botched. And Nick Murphy is going to try and take it in. And Jack Bicknell oh. said to us, he's died for the first down marker, and has he got it? That's the question. I think he might just have done it, you know. That is smart play from Murphy if he's got it. I don't know if that was planned or was a botched snap. Well, they've had so many problems with the snaps, they have. haven't they? Jack McNeil was telling us. McNeil was speaking to us in the production meeting about, you know, the snaps have been real inconsistent and the holes have been inconsistent. And in the, the kicking game, that's one of the, the two priorities you want to have, a great hole and a great snap. On this play, obviously the replay to no. know. I think it was a bad snap on that play. And a real heads-up play from Nick Murphy from the Eagles, who's had a terrific season. He didn't think he was going to be a running back today, did he? <laughs> <laughs> but you saw the snap again. It was a real problem. That ball just bobbled along. I mean, he's got no chance here. Look at that. Well, actually, on the replay, it's not that bad. But Murphy's decided, yeah, I'm going to have a go here. And it turns out to be the smart decision. Stretches for the first time. So first down, Bellamy left, Haygood right. And they go on the ground, and for the first time this season, Scotland have scored a rushing touchdown, Ahmad Galloway. Excellent play calling right there. Excellent play calling. Oh, we have a penalty, I believe. Well, which way is this going to go? Just as the Claymores were celebrating, surely they've not found another way to beat themselves, and it looks yeah. as if they have. Yes, they have. That's definitely not positive right there. Well, we're still having trouble with uh, Gene Sterator's microphone. Holding. But holding we know it's holding, we, but uh, whoever the offensive lineman was will be happy that uh, we can't hear his number. Exactly. <laughs> They're lucky they had a technical problem on that play, but, you know, it's going to make it a first in... I believe uh, first and 13. Uh, he's still in the, in the red zone. Still feel, well, that's, still points, that's points off the board. Is, and and for an offense that has, uh, as Nate Hibble himself said, we are starving for touchdowns. Mm -hmm. You can't have one and then have it snatched out of your mouth like that. Yeah, that's going to hurt. You know, and, and they've been, like you say, starving for points. Uh, and also running the football. You think last week, yeah. 12 carries, oh, excuse me, 12 carries, nine, nine yards, I believe. It was awful. That's tough. That's tough. And they just get a rushing touchdown. They have to get it called back. Yeah, they scored a rushing touchdown, and it doesn't count. They got to do it all again. First down. They keep the same formation with Galloway in the backfield, McCready in the slot. This time the swing pass is to the Englishman, and McCready is dancing around and he's going nowhere. Backwards in a hurry. Chris Brown may have been the first man there. Linaris L. Page was there shortly afterwards as well, and McCready. Had five guys in front of him. Yes, he did. And one of those guys was Chris Brown. Chris Brown, when I, Brown, when I talked to him, said he wanted to come over here to NFL Europe and work on his tackling. Right there in the overfield, made an excellent tackle on McCready. McCready's more of a possession receiver, but on that play, it was more of a check with me. Just a little swing pass, one of the most safest passes in the NFL, I mean, NFL Europe to get it to, the ball to the receiver and let him do something with it. Brown from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Was on their practice squad last year. Second down and goal. McCready is the motion man this time. And Hibble puts it up in the direction of Haygood, and that's just overthrown, and that's going to bring up third down and goal, and the coverage down there was pretty tight as well. The coverage was excellent. He knows. Ralph Perrin on the coverage. That was an excellent coverage by him on a, on a short fade route. A lot of teams try to do that here in the red zone, hoping they get man-to-man -man coverage to try to beat one-on-one -on -one with the receiver and cornerback, make it a jump ball situation. 
probably just as well that ball was overthrown because they had Haygood very tightly bracketed indeed. So, third down and goal. The Claymore's trying to repair the damage done by that offensive hold. There goes McCready again. And Hibble drops, feels some pressure and goes down. And doesn't that series sum up Scotland's season? Yes, it does. You know, one thing positive happened, next thing you know, it's taken off the board. Negative plays. Every play after that was a negative play. Corey Jackson doing the damage. Watch Corey Jackson again. Left end come. Bull rushes Ogden. Hibble wants to step up in the pocket. Easy sack for Jackson. And does a little shimmy after that. Well, what do they do this time? Are they going to fake it again? No, Hart's kick is on its way in the sun. And NFL Europe's all-time leading point scorer has added a 34-yard field goal to his tally. But that is not what the Claymores wanted. They had the end zone. It got called back. It's 7-3. Welcome back. Skip Hicks of the Frankfurt Galaxy has put his team on top of the Scottish Claymores here early with a two-yard run. Hicks, of course, an NFL veteran, was drafted by the Washington Redskins in 1998, has bounced around the NFL as well. Chicago, Tennessee and Carolina has over a 1,000 career rushing yards, including a career game against the Green Bay Packers. And I always thought it was the job of the strong safety to stop a running back. But on that, yeah. on that day, clearly, the strong safety was somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember that game. That game was blocked <laughs> out of my memory. But uh, actually, I do. And I've known Skip Hicks uh, since he was drafted. He was drafted one of my better, with one of my better friends, Sean Barber, with the Redskins. And he was excellent back when he came into the league. You know, kind of bounced around a little bit. But, you know, Skip is one of those players that can be as good as he wants to be. You know, he has all the talent, all the ability, but he has to be the one to decide how good he wants to be. And now it's the Cincinnati Bengals taking a look at him and another really shallow kick that Chris Edmonds is uh, probably surprised to be fielding and taking to the 36-yard line. Well, the claim was giving up field position very easily here, just five yards on the return. But look where they are. Well, you got to think, you know, Hart has, doesn't have a shoe on. I don't think he kicked the ball that far. That hasn't hurt his, that hasn't hurt his leg. He tried to kick the ball uh, that far. No, actually, Hart was in the game kicking. It was Hart. Yeah. Oh, well, so yeah. they've switched. First they, switched, they had Jensen, uh -huh. then they had Hart, and neither of them can get it deep. And you can't give up this type of field position to an offense as potent as the Galaxy. So the usual pro set for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Hayes is the motion man, the tight end. Play action. O'Sullivan feels the pressure. Just a little shovel pass to Skip Hicks, and Hicks is bouncing around and uh, turns what would have been a couple of yards into five yards, and it'll bring up second down and five. And that goes back to, that goes back to the play where you see O'Sullivan with a little improvisation going on, where he just flips the ball, a little shovel pass to Hicks. He's getting a little pre pressure right here, goes up in the pocket, the pocket collapse, sees Hicks in right there in, in front of him, flips the ball to him, no reason to throw it overhand. He said, I'm going to get it to him any way I can. And you like to see a guy that it brings a lot of excitement when you watch a player like O'Sullivan. He can do a lot of things like that. A little bit crazy, but, you know, a lot of positives come from it. Drafted by the Saints a couple of years ago. They brought, brought him over here just to get a, a taste of some real action. And O'Sullivan finds a wide-open Edmonds once again, who is brought down immediately by James Lewis, the safety man. And uh, Edmonds looks like he may be shaken up there. And Edmonds, as we take another look at this, Edmonds is definitely not moving. Oh, oh dear. If I also assume it looks like a leg. His plant leg kind of got stuck underneath him. He hasn't moved. I see him holding on to his knee right there. I hope it's not a knee. Well, they lost one of their tight ends this week mm -hmm. when Leonard Stevens had an abdominal muscle problem. So he's out, and Edmonds... Well, you hate to speculate, but he went down and didn't move, and that's usually a very bad sign. You know, from playing football for so many years, and, and you see a lot of plays, I can already tell you right now it's a knee. Besides the fact that they're looking at it and they hold on to his knee, watch his right leg kind of get stuck in the ground right here as he gets, see? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that doesn't look good at all. And I don't want to speculate because I'm not a pro prognosticator, but it doesn't look good at all. And it will change the Galaxy's offensive game plan as well because their other tight end, Chad Hayes, is primarily a blocker. This was the guy that they were going to join Payne to the offensive coordinator. We'll have to uh, take some of the plays out of his playbook, you would think, because Hayes, his last tight end, is he can catch a few balls, but he's mainly there just to pass, protect, and to block. And uh, Edmonds was the guy that they really wanted to uh, get the ball in the hands of. Hayes here is probably thinking, well, don't throw it to me. Exactly, <laughs> you know, because it seems like he's the next one on the list. 
Uh, he's he's the only one on the list. Yeah, he is the only one on the list. But, you know, Edmund was a, a kid that can do a lot of things with the football in his hand. You see him on any reverses they ran last week in practice. I'm watching him getting down the field, one-on-one -on -one with safeties, catching the football. Um, it, it's tough to see a kid go like go out like that, especially a kid that wants to get to that next level of the NFL and to get hurt in the NFL. You're trying to achieve his goal. Uh, it's tough, and you just send your heart out to a kid like that. Well, let's hope it looks worse than it actually is. But uh, Chris Edmonds is going off the field very slowly. And you just keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. Meanwhile, he did get a first down. So O'Sullivan with a whole new set of downs to play with at the 45-yard line. Sullivan with time and that's not a well-thrown ball in the direction of Jason Willis he does come up, go a little bit errantly every once in a while JT and that was one of them and that, and that goes back to fundamentals you know you talk about O'Sullivan and how he makes a lot of plays with his feet you know shovel passes but sometimes he doesn't set his feet in the pocket and just deliver the ball on time uh, that one went a little bit wide and that's all it goes back to fundamentals and mechanics and so, those are things they'll learn with more experience so second down and ten Galaxy at their own 45. Haddad is the motion man, and Haddad is going to get the carry on their at the end around. They love this play, the Galaxy, and that's why Haddad close to first down yardage before he's pushed out of bounds by Thomas Wright, and they may move the chains. You know, speaking of Mike Jones, one of the things that he said to me, we're going to use the reverses this week because they're there. And if they're there, why not take them? Haddad's a perfect player to get the ball in his hands. A quick running back, quick receiver that can use and make the extra yard in that right here great blocking on the outside gets picks up the first down well he said you'll see him this week but we could have told him that because you see it every week with the yeah. galaxy don't you they, they, <laughs> they put two or three of those in every single game and they're very successful on first down O'Sullivan looks again and he's got Lewis who's made the catch inside the 10 working Thomas Wright who just seemed to lose the ball in the sun and it's a big first down of the Galaxy, 37 yards. Yes, that's an excellent throw and catch by the Galaxy. And right goes up and gets this ball in the air. See, throwing up, the safety's right there, loses track of the football. Lewis does an excellent job of bringing the football down and, and almost keeping his feet and rolling to this. So you see him still trying to roll and get more yardage. And that's what it comes down to, making plays when the ball is in the air. And like you said, the, Officer Corden and Payne was speaking about wanting their receivers to make more plays down the field. Lewis certainly making some plays down the field for the Galaxy who are looking to build on their league. Mark Sumer, the Frenchman, is the motion man. O'Sullivan looks, looks, can't find anything. Now he takes off, just throws it away under pressure. Cedric Scott was uh, breathing down his neck. Yes, he was. And the defensive line for Scotland uh, has played well thus far this year. And they you know, got pressure on the quarterback. That way forced the Aaron throw by O'Sullivan. He doesn't seem to have anyone open. Side does an excellent job holding on to him and making O'Sullivan throw the ball away, which is a good play on both parts. The good pressure and also O'Sullivan making a good judgment and throwing the ball out of bounds, not losing any yardage. Cedric Scott from the Cleveland Browns, Jack McNell was telling us that was one guy he thought might make it in the NFL. Well, this is where the Galaxy have really struggled this season, not on their first visit today. They went in that time, O'Sullivan looking to make it two for two, down the middle, wide open, touchdown, Frankfurt Galaxy. Would you know it? It's the tight end, Chad Hayes. He said, actually, I am going to be the next one. The next one is going to touch down. <laughs> he was so open. Yes, he was. I mean, my grandmother could have sat back there and found him open on that pass. It had to be a mix-up in coverage by the Claymores. Well, so much for problems in the red zone. Frankfurt go two for two to take an early stranglehold on this game. Late first quarter, J.T. O'Sullivan has driven the team down into the red zone twice, converted both times. Ralph Kleinman will attempt to tack on the extra point for a 14-3 lead. And there it is, just like that. Well, the real worry from the Claymore's perspective is the defense has been the strength of this team, but the Galaxy have had the ball twice and they've scored two touchdowns. You watch Chad Hayes here at the tight end on this play. He's going to run a little over the middle route, and he's going to have a follow right behind him. I guess the defenders were looking at the guy that's going to come behind him instead of following the tight end. Wide open, split the coverage, easy throw and catch. 
Well, he doesn't catch many, does he? He played for Berlin last year. All season, he caught 12 balls. That is catch number six for him. It's his first touchdown of the season. That's one of the things when you go into the film room, you don't see a guy catching too many balls, get out there in the field, and you don't worry about him. You lose focus on where he is. Next thing you know, he's got a touchdown on you. 11 plays, 65 yards. And now doesn't that Scotland touchdown that was taken off the board loom large? Yes, it definitely does. 11 points, the deficit. But you guess who's back to return the kickoff? <laughs> Herb <Hey> good. <laughs> well, we'll see if he can help his team out again by a great return. It is shirt sleeves weather. Not for me and Darren, of course. We're in our best jackets and ties, of course. Oh, they're enjoying it. You can see that. You know, they're not used to this sun this early in the, in the season. I guess they want to come out here and enjoy this great weather and watch a great football game at the same time. A good deep kick fielded at the goal line by the man from Kansas City. And Haygood looking for a seam again, and he's got another one. Working a block and now crossing the field to the 40. Now he cuts to the 45. Another terrific return. 47 yards from Herb Haygood, who is really making a name for himself ever since he handled kickoff return duties. You know what that's all about? Confidence, great blocking. He feels now that if he gets the ball in his hand, he can make something happen. And I, I spoke earlier about he's backing up a guy who gets the Kansas Chief and Dante Hall. I'm not going to say, I'm not even going to speak out of my, my mouth that Dante has to worry about anything, but you'll see him go to, to the left, get up the seam, and break back across the grain right there and try to outrun the defenders. Excellent return by Herb Haygood. Well, he's Kansas City Chiefs have a great player. They certainly do. He's averaging 50 yards on two returns, having already put a 95-yarder last week on the ground. They go Maurice Hicks won't get a lot. Maybe three tough inside yards. Bobby Setzer in on the stop. But uh, Haygood is one of those guys that if you don't make it as a receiver, you can make it as a special teamer in the NFL. So th this guy's doubling his options here. Oh, he definitely is. And, and one thing about coming from the NFL Europe and going to the NFL, a lot of players are going to have to do that, be able to be multidimensional, uh, whether it's special teams, uh, sn long snapping, ret returning kicks, uh, playing receiver. You have to be able to do a lot of things to try to get a spot on the squad. And Herb Haygood is doing excellent at returning kicks right now. Second down for this Claymore's offense. Play action from Hibble, sets us after him. But Hibble looked for Scott Cooper, the veteran receiver from Glasgow, and couldn't get him. And it's incomplete, and we see that number 94. If it's a running play inside, there's number 94. If it's a pass flaring out, 94 is the guy applying pressure. Bobby sets is just seven. one of those guys that's around the football. Around the football. When you turn on the film, uh, you're going to see 94 making plays. You're going to see his name and his number in the, in the screen at all times. And he's a kid that's going to get pressure on the quarterback, make plays in the running game, and, and do it all. I said it's his birthday this week. It's actually today. Oh, it's a happy birthday, he's, Bobby. He's blown out 28 candles this morning. <laughs> I've still got a bit of energy to play some football. Third down. Play action from Hibble. Here comes the rush. There goes Maurice Hicks, flattened by Mason Unk. And they'll actually lose a couple of yards. Mason Unk is a kid that is a very intelligent ball player. And whenever you see a guy make a play that is the end of like the first this, quarter. you know he's thought about the play and seen it coming before quarter. it happens. Yeah, the Claymore's offense struggling, the Galaxy offense flying. It's 14-3 here in Frankfurt. Well, there's a bad sight. Chris Edmonds being taken away, presumably the hospital, in an ambulance. And we can only say, oh, send our good wishes to him and the wishes of 25,000 Frankfurt Galaxy fans. And it's one of those things, players, whatever the league, whatever the team, you hate to see it, don't you? Yeah, you definitely do. Uh, especially a kid like that has been working so hard. Uh, it's really tough to see. Nick Murphy, who has punted very well for Scotland, one of their few bright spots. And a fair catch made by Drew Haddad at the 15-yard line. 37 yards on the punt. And down inside the 20, which is what you want, but it's another chance for the Galaxy to show that uh, this offense is, is really starting to click. And a new quarterback, Kirk Farmer, from the Kansas City Chiefs. This is what we expected. Farmer takes the second quarter here in Frankfurt. Scotland will alternate their two quarterbacks. Kurt Ains is the fellow we'll see next. And, and it's basically just to give these guys that come to Europe a chance to play. Yeah, it, it definitely is. I was confused a little bit when I first saw two quarterbacks coming in the game. But with Sullivan on the sideline, it's more to get each guy a look by his NFL squad. Farmer did a pretty good job last week in Scotland. Impressed one or two people. And they'll go just on the ground. Not a lot doing there for Jeff Cheney, who joined the team this week. The former Barcelona Dragon, James Lewis, on the stop. 
a farmer, it's one of those Missouri boys, he went to the University of Missouri, and he was in camp with the Rams last year, and now the man that makes his home in Jefferson City, Missouri, a sign for Kansas City. Some people just don't like to go too far from home. No, they don't. He's a big, strong, strapping Midwestern kid. You know, big, tall, about 6'4", 6'5", uh, 230 pounds, and can throw the ball a mile. Take that helmet off. He looks like a surf dude as well. Well, they fooled everybody this time with Cheney running into Jimmy McLean, and they'll pick up another first down. They're very good at disguising this uh, misdirection stuff, the Galaxy. Well, this is a ghost play. They're trying to send a receiver out wide to hold that backside defensive end so he doesn't crash down and make the tackle on a, on a draw play. And get outside wide, beat off, get outside of the contain, get positive yardage like you see Cheney did right there. Maybe the Claymore's just caught off balance because they've seen so much of Skip Hicks carrying the ball and Corey McIntyre has been the guy that's uh, been getting hold of the football when Hicks has taken a breather, but they've just signed Jeff Cheney this week and Cheney has brought him a first down. McIntyre is in the back, back backfield, presumably to block. Farmer with an awful lot of time, and he just overthrows the intended receiver, who was Jason Willis, and Willis was wide open again, and Farmer would love to have that one back. Yeah, he would love to have that one back. A lot of guys were open this play. I saw the tight end opening. The McIntyre was opening the flat. Watch right here. They're running what we call a 68. The receiver right here in the middle is running an eight route. Six route is by the Willis coming underneath. Clear out the zone. A little bit too high. If he was about three inches taller, he might have a chance for that, but... Couldn't get more open, though, could you? No, you cannot get more open than that. Second down, Drew Haddad is the motion man. Farmer feels some pressure, gets rid of it. Cheney, though, is dragged down for the loss of a couple of yards. Jimmy McLean on the stop. McLean has had a really busy campaign from that middle linebacker position. Yes, he, yes, he has. McLean is one of those players that can make move from sideline to sideline. He's talked to us in the production meeting about how his defensive alignment keep all the blockers off him and let him use his speed to make plays. You see it right there on the screen, him getting to the football and catching the, the running back in the backfield for a loss. But I like this kid, McLean. He played actually behind my brother for two years in Houston. Uh, and my brother spoke about what kind of player I was going to see when I came over here, and I've been impressed. Your brother, of course, being Jamie Sharper. No, oh, everyone knows know that. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> I didn't even have to say that. I didn't know that. Yeah, Jamie Sharper for the Houston Texans. Now, Farmer, that ball was tipped, but it's still complete to her dad. And it's a first down to the Frankfurt Galaxy, 16 yards. He got a chance to get it back right there for a first down. And this was an area they wanted to attack. See Farmer right here, sit back in the pocket, find the middle of the field wide open. That's the area of the field they want to attack when they looked at the Claymore's defense uh, in the film room. They knew they could get down the middle of the field and make some plays, and that's what you'll see there, the, the Claymore's attack, excuse me, the Galaxy attack uh, throughout the day. Drew Haddad, whose father-in-law is the defensive coordinator for this team. Now then, Cheney's just run into his own man there and then runs into a whole bunch of trouble. He actually banged into his center, Jonathan Ingram, so it's uh, a couple of yards and no more than that. You can't run through your own offensive lineman. No, you cannot. And the Galaxy's offensive linemen have done an excellent job this year. Uh, Skip Hicks was telling us how strong and a young offensive lineman they are. Uh, they made a lot of open holes for him to the great, great yardage this year. And he's excited to be running behind an offensive line as stout as they are. It's a typical Dwayne Painter offense. Big offensive lineman. A big guy in the backfield to block. And a lot of creativity as well. Play action from Farmer. And he rolls out, and he's got a man down on the sideline, loses the football, Lewis, but I think that just uh, went out of the sideline. Mm -hmm. Scotland can't buy a break at the moment. You know, one thing I like about Dwayne Painter's offense is that he's letting his quarterbacks do a lot of different things. You see him sitting back in the pocket right here. You watch Farmer on a little bootleg action, get out wide, and be able to show all the NFL scouts and all the NFL teams that he can throw the ball on the run. Excellent throwing catch, Lewis loses the ball at the end, but it goes out of bounds. The there is Dwayne Painter, the offensive That's coordinator, right. and you've got to give some credit it's to Mike Jones as well, who came here as head coach from Ryan Fire, where he was offensive coordinator, and he came in and said, no, I like the job that Dwayne Painter's doing, I'm trusting my offense to this guy, and that's, that's showing a lot of confidence in your coaching staff. Yes, it is, and whenever you're an offensive coordinator and you see a new coach coming in, you don't know what he's going to do, whether he's going to change your schemes or whatever, but he said, I'm, I'm going to trust in what you can do, I believe in it, and it's shown this year that they have one of the most productive offenses in NFL Europe. They've ruled it just short of first down yardage, so that's going to be third down and one. Farmer working from midfield. 
No, Jack McNell not happy about something. We're having a little conference call here on the sideline. I think, yeah, I believe he's going to complain that it wasn't a catch. He didn't have control of the football. When you're a coach and you see the game going in this direction, you're trying to ask for any type of help you can get. Yeah. And, you know, you'll talk to the referees and just hope that something positive can go in your direction. Well, Jack was robbed last week. Uh, an important third and ten. Galaxy converted and replays clearly showed it wasn't a catch. The officials let one slip. And I think Jack's just letting him know, hey, come on, you guys. You got me last week. Don't yeah. get me this week. You know, they asked for instant replay in the NFL Europe. I don't think it's going to be here anytime soon, but you know, those are type plays that you just have to live with. Jack has argued his case and has failed. You always do when you argue your okay? case. It doesn't stop you arguing, but you've got to give it a go. Even if the defendant is guilty, you're still going to argue for it. <laughs> Farmer three for four on this drive as he faces third down and one. Lewis goes in motion. Cheney gets the carry and Cheney squirts through a hole and a good second effort will pick up four yards and a four-yard gain where they needed one. Alfonso Roundtree coming up from the secondary and making the stop. But Cheney moves the chains. Yeah, you watch right here. Watch the offensive lineman make the play, creating a path for Cheney to get extra yards on a tough third and one. Excellent run by Cheney, keeping in the center of gravity low. So was able to continue to go forward and get the first down. That's called tough inside Number running. That change. Number 52 has reported eligible. So first down at the 46-yard line of the Scottish Claymores. Lewis is the motion man. And they'll stay on the ground. It's working with Cheney, and Cheney looking to try and make a bit of a name for himself. And Jeff Cheney comes over here with nothing to lose and everything to gain. He comes into NFL Europe late. He's a free agent, which means he can showcase himself to every NFL team. And uh, who knows? It might just be your day. Yeah, it definitely might be. Uh, Cheney came here, like you said, just off the streets. He was at home, you know, resting. And you could tell by the juice he has in his legs. Uh, and what we like to say in uh, Green Bay land, we call them fresh legs. You know, you come over here, you haven't been playing football, you have a little extra juice to make those cuts like you see him doing today. Second down and six. There's another end around, and this time the Claymores read it all the way, and Derek Lewis was met by a wall of white and blue as he uh, took that ball and probably thought, ah, we don't need to do these end arounds anymore. Yeah, I think Alvin McCord <laughs> made the play on that, on, that, on that run right there. He stayed at home, did an excellent job, and that, looking at all the face, stay at home and believe the ball's going to come back to you and stop him in the backfield. This Scotland defense has been playing well this year. They, and let Frankfurt drive the ball on thus far today, but I, I would look for them to improve and slow down some of Frankfurt's uh, offensive plays. Well, it's a big third down coming up here. Farmer will go from the shotgun on third and long. The Claymore's looking for their first defensive stand of this ball game, and a flag comes in, and one of the Claymore's defenders did not get off the field. So I've got a feeling that once again, Scotland have shot themselves in the foot. They were doing all kinds of substitutions there, the Claymore's. Somebody came on, then tried to get off. The ball was snapped. The flags came in. I don't know if they have too many men on the field or not enough men on the field. Well, you can't be penalized as a defense for not enough guys. They'll let you play with nine oh, yeah, if you want. Exactly. He definitely was trying to get off. I think Gavin Walsh was trying to run off the field to get off in enough time. So they had to have too many, too many men on the field. And now Jimmy McLean saying, no, 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 no. He made it. He was okay. And Gene Sterator continues to uh, talk this one over with his crew. Jack Bicknell, well, he lobbied hard last time and lost. And the head coach hates to see when the referees get together and they can't see what's going on. They want to get in there on that conversation and know what's happening. There is no foul for defense too many men on the field. There were only 11 men on the field. Fourth down. Well, no foul, and Mike Jones now has to start arguing with the officials. And that's an interesting call, because we both saw a Scotland player running for the sideline, and the ball was snapped, and the flag came in, and it could only have been too many men on the field. But they've obviously decided, no, I threw my, I threw my flag too quickly. Yeah, I, I, I assume there was going to be too many men on the field, but they have enough. Alfonso Roundtree is the punt returner for the Scottish Claymores after Ian Smart lost three punt returns in just two weeks they made the change and what can roundtree do with it that ball just hangs there takes a bounce and roundtree decides he's going to pick it up and run with it and doesn't get far but at least from the scotland perspective he doesn't cough it up so the frankfurt galaxy dominating this bank game on the scoreboard
14-3, but it's the Claymores who will have the ball when we return. Welcome back, the Frankfurt Galaxy leading the Scottish Claymores in the sunshine in Frankfurt here, 14 to 3, but now it's a chance for Kurt Ames of the Detroit Lions to show what he can do in the spotlight as he now takes over a Scotland offence that struggled no matter who's been under centre. Yeah, and Ames wants to come in the game, hopefully he can breathe some life into the Claymore offence. I mean, uh, Coach McNeil, you know, he likes to switch his quarterbacks, and he told us in the production meeting that it's not because one quarterback is playing better than the other, he just wants to give both teams, both players a look uh, over here. And, now the Frankfurt Galaxy has to be prepared because Ains is a kid that will run around and make plays with his feet like O'Sullivan would. So it's a different type of quarterback you want to face right now. He's a guy that had knee problems. He said it took away a lot of his uh, elusiveness, but he says it's coming back here and they're going from the shotgun on first down. How often have you seen that from a Jack Bicknell offense over the years? And you might not see it anymore after that. A total disaster. Ains loses the football. The Galaxy think they've got it. Jeff Hazuga, who's a long snapper primarily, has forced the fumble. And Kurt Ains takes one snap and loses it. And Scotland's day goes from bad to worse. I believe Bobby Sesson was in on this play right here. Again, you'll see him come from the right side of your screen. And get a piece of Ains, and then Heisinger comes in and strips the ball away. That is not the way you want to come in the game and start your drive. Well, a few weeks ago when this Scotland offense was struggling, the fans, a lot of fans in Scotland were saying, well, turn it over to Kurt Ains on the theory that the backup quarterback is always, always the most popular guy in the team. But it really has been whatever the situation for Scotland offensively, they've just struggled. They've been struggling all year long. And instead here, Farmer gets his hands on the ball once again. Terrific field position. Skip Hicks looking to plow his way forward, and they're asking that Scotland defence once again under this blisteringly hot sun just to lace it up, buckle it up, and get out there once more. It's tough as a defence to be out there so many plays. Of course, watch the pulling guard right here come around and kick out the linebacker and clear way for Skip Hicks to get positive yardage. And you see Galaxy pounding the football, and that's a great way to tire a defence out even more because they've been on the field so long. Conrad Dean leading the way there, the man from Jacksonville. Second down. Farmer will give it to Hicks again, and Hicks goes straight up the middle. And is he in? No signal yet. Now it's come. Touchdown, Frankfurt. Touchdown number two of the ball game for Skip Hicks. Skip Hicks is on his way for a career day. Two touchdowns early in the first half. And that's a tired Scotland defense. You can just see it. And their mannerisms, they're just tired. Well, it was asking a lot for them, wasn't it? Just when they thought they were getting a breather. Mm -hmm. Instead, they lose the football. Hicks comes in. And a nine-yard run. Touchdown number three of the ball game. And Frankfurt are threatening to run away with this. And we're just halfway through the second quarter. Kleinman tacks on the extra point, And it's 21 to three. Turnovers will always hurt you. That one may have just finished it for the Scottish Claymores. They've got a mountain to climb now. Skip Hicks and the Galaxy running away with it. These fans are loving every minute of it. It's a near perfect day if you're a Frankfurt Galaxy fan. The sun is shining, the sky is blue, and your team is leading 21-3. Closing in on a place in the World Bowl. Two plays and 12 yards was all it took for Skip Hicks to get his second touchdown of this ball game and his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And his ninth in total. He's got a couple through the air as well. Yeah, Hicks, Hicks is making a, definitely making a name for himself. Uh, catching the football, running the football, scoring touchdowns. Uh, he has the most carries also of anyone in NFL Europe. Uh, and you speak about the fans, you know, what more can you ask for? Come out and get a tan, watch your team. Play an excellent game. They've, they've stopped kicking to Haygood, but that's taken a bounce and gone to Haygood. Now, can he weave his magic once again? It looks like trouble. Nowhere to go. And on his touchdown run, we're going to go to right here, a skip pick. If you watch the defensive lineman for Scotland, you can tell how tired they are, how they're not getting off blocks. You see the offensive line for the Galaxy just push them. They run a block right here, or they run a tag team, seal the defensive lineman. He's not getting off a block, and Skip Hicks has a clear path to the end zone. When you've been on the field this long, it's tough, especially deep in the line, they're the bigger guys on the field, to be have an opportunity to get fresh 
and start to make more plays in the running game, and that's when you see what happened. Touchdown. And they've been on the field most of this game. Now, Ains went out of the shotgun last time. That didn't work, so he's gone under center this time, and they've given it to Ian Smart. And Smart will pick up four yards. And you can't work out what you've got with Ian Smart. They used him first as a running back. Then they pushed him out to a receiver. That didn't work out. Then they had him returning, and that certainly didn't work out. Now he's gone into the backfield. He's got some weapons, this fella. I mean, he's been too productive in college just to be sat on the bench. It's getting the best out of him. Yeah, exactly. He's a guy that has speed. You know, he, by him playing several positions, you know he has talent. So you just need to find a place, a niche for him to fall into and become a great player in that, in that position. Here he is again, as Jack Bicknell looks to try and find some sort of spark for his offense and how they need a first down, not only for their offense, but also for their defense. As you say, those guys are absolutely gassed. There's guys just sat on the bench there, heads bowed. They are looking tired already, these guys, and it's still the first half. And they've got a couple of guys missing up front. They've lost Gavin Walls and Rob Flickinger's playing hurt as well, so they're down a couple of bodies. Yeah, that makes it even tougher when you want to feel that long. And then the team is driving the ball on you, and it's hard to get your win and, and continue to make plays. Third and one, Scotland 0 for 3 on third downs in this ball game. They really need a long drive here just to give their defense a chance, and we got all kinds of stuff going on there. Ains eventually goes down, and I couldn't tell you if that was an offensive lineman flinching, a defensive lineman jumping, because everybody seemed to move at the same time. Even the quarterback could have maybe called for, off, for a false start. Snap infraction, 64 offense, five-yard penalty. It's gone against Remains Kurt McGill, down. the center, and once again, a bad penalty at an important time. You watch the center right here. Early start, moves a little bit, and as an offensive lineman, you can't move at all. Penalty is killing the Scottish Claymores this far in this game. They need to get something going or uh, to have any life for this game. So instead of third and short, they're looking at third and six, and Ains from the shotgun once again. Now that snap wasn't the best, and Ains feels some pressure, bounces away from Jackson, and then finds Haygood, and Haygood is eventually pushed out of bounds by Ahmad Brooks, and it's a first down. It looked like, it looked like Jackson. Ran into a brick wall. I don't think Ains is that, that strong, but it looks like he did. He come from the left side of the screen. I don't know if he comes on a stiff arm or what. Oh, my goodness. He just bounced off, creates Ains even a better pocket to find. Read on the outside for the first down. How did that happen? How can Kurt Ains stand no there and, and send Corey Jackson to the floor? I have no explanation for that. I've never seen that happen before. First down. Now, Scotland trying to just take some clock. Scott McCready loses the football. That ball was stripped. And who's got that? Have the Galaxy recovered it? No, yes, they have. McCready had it, lost it. And it looks like Chris Kern has recovered it. But this what, Galaxy defense is fired oh up. My goodness, they're playing at a high level today. I mean, you just can't see anything good happen for the Scottish Claymores. They find a, a pass right there. Kurt Ains gets the ball out here to his receiver. He makes a great catch. He's trying to fight for more yardage. But great awareness by the linebacker Cohen. They strip the ball out, strip the ball away. And then also, oh, Curran jumps over the pile and makes an excellent recovery before the ball goes out of bounds. I mean, it just seems as though the Frankfurt Galaxy are playing at a faster level and are, are attempting to make plays. Scottie Claymores are not gearing themselves towards doing that. And those big defensive linemen dragged themselves back out onto this field. This sun continuing to be hot and had dad continuing to make plays as well. It's another big first down straight down the middle for Kirk Farmer and the Frankfurt Galaxy. And we spoke about the Galaxy trying to attack the Claymore defense through the middle. Uh, the linebackers aren't dropping to kind of fill that void. The safeties are playing a little deep. It's tough. That area is always be open, especially when a team is running a lot of cover two, which the Claymores are doing today. 22 yards on the completion for the former Indianapolis Colts. And that's what they especially finding those little seams and little cracks and crevices over the middle to catch the football. And Farmer's third drive, he only gets the second quarter, but uh, he seems to be on the field the whole of this quarter. This time there is nothing doing for Jeff Cheney, and that was uh, a get rid of your frustration tackle there. A big Duran Roundtree. Roundtree said, I'm tired of running football on me. I'm gonna try to make a play, uh, shut this run down. You want to see your defensive lineman continue to fight. I know it's tough, you know, a warm day. They've been on the field for an extremely long time in the football game. But you have to just keep fighting, and hopefully, hopefully something good can happen. No defense wants to be out there the whole time. But look at this. Their offense just can't get anything going at all. They've lost two turnovers. 
So it's bad if you're out there the whole time anyway as a defensive, a defensive unit. But in this sun as well, and Farmer can just stand there and take pot shots. This time he gets lucky. And it's the same picture image that you see from the previous game. You think about the Scottish Claymore offense only having 33 plays, having the defense on the field for so long. On this play right here, Farmer, again, throws the ball a little bit high when he gets, doesn't get his feet set, he, the ball tends to ride up in the air a little bit too far on him, making it tough for the receivers to, tough for the receivers to catch the ball. That was a catchable football, but it's, you, as a receiver, you love to have the ball right there in your pocket to hold on to it. Mark Suma, the Frenchman who couldn't pull it in, and this sun is just burning down on these players, but you don't feel it when you're 21-3 up and looking for more. Suma gets it this time. Franklin on the tackle, and they're ruling that he did not have possession. That's incomplete. Well, that's twice Mark Suma's had a chance, and twice he's let it go. That's a great tackle by Franklin out there wide. Of course, you know, was telling us that he's their best cover corner uh, for the Claymores. On that play, he did a great job of getting the football out and forcing the incompletion. Suma had a chance to catch this football, but he doesn't watch it all the way in. Right when he gets hit, Franklin does a great job of bringing his hands down and stripping the football out for the incompletion, forcing the field goal attempt. So Jamie Ream will attempt a 48-yard field goal. And it looks like he's pushed that wide left, and the Claymores at last get a break. And for the first time in the ball game, something's gone wrong for Frankfurt. And Brad Franklin just bounced off the field there, and the Claymores will feel they made a stand. Exactly, that's what they need to do. Have something positive happen. We were speaking about it earlier. As a defense, you just want to get off the field and hopefully get a rest. You can see them walking off the sidelines right now. They're a little tired. This could be something to get Frankfurt, excuse me, Scottish, the Scottish Claymores going and get them, get them ready to play and make some plays. They're probably just thinking now, offense, please, please. just give us five minutes just to sit here. First down, Scotland. Rubin, the former Frankfurt Galaxy man, gets the ball on the end around. And he'll try to cut back inside and gets nothing, but still somehow stays on his feet. And this time, Jack Hazuga gets him at the second attempt. And that play was doomed from the start, despite the De Andrew Rubin's best effort. On this play, you, when you watch it, you saw the defensive line for the Frankfurt Galaxy hustling to the football, being active. That's not the same thing you see with Scotland. You watch all the, 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 the blue jerseys you see right here attacking this football. First of all, Rubin gets cut up in the middle on reverse, gets almost hog tagged right there, and he still tries to get some yardage, and he gets run down by a defensive lineman. The energy that the Frankfurt Galaxy are playing with, because they're fresher, they're not tired like the Scotland defensive lineman. Little draw play for Galloway, who will pick up some positive yards, maybe four, that's about it. So that's gonna bring up, off. in fact, that'll bring up a third down and six. When you're speaking of uh, getting the defensive lineman a, a little bit of win, for the Claymores, I think that's what McNeil is trying to do. By having two runs right here, uh, even a timeout right here with a two-minute warning, give them an opportunity to, to get some win and, and getting their defense off the field for a while because a, a tired defense is always going to be a defense that's going to get beaten. So they face a critical third down, the Frankfurt, the uh, Barca, the Scottish Claymores, 21-3 down, needing some points at the two-minute warning. It's 21-3, Galaxy over the Claymores at the two-minute warning in the first half. And the Claymores may not be winning too many games this year, but they're certainly going to win the award for best-dressed players. And that's because of this fella here, Tani Fernandez. He's the official tucker in. He is the team's equipment manager. He's a guy from London. He is a picture of sartorial elegance. As you can see, his players always look their best. Well, isn't that ironic? He's going to make sure that the players look good, but he's not worried about tucking his own shirt in. Oh, you mess with Tani Fernandez. <laughs> You're messing with me there, I tell you. He's a good man, is Tanny. Now then, big third down with two minutes left in the first half. Kurt Ames trying to make something happen. Looking, can't find anyone. Now it's complete. And a tough catch over the middle for first down yardage. Scott McCready holding on this time. And we speak about Scott McCready finding the little zones over the middle. And that's why he's a leading pass catcher in the NFL Europe. You know, you watch him right here working the slot against the nickelback, Chris Brown. And Chris Brown said he's going to try to shut down the slot. But he went in the zone play. McCready tries to find, keep working, keep working. Catch the football in the air and hold on to it for a great first down. Pressure's coming again. Jackson can't quite get hold of Ains, and Ains is going to take off, looking to blockers, and he's found a little seam as well. And that's an amazing run of 20 yards from Kurt Ains. And this is such a significant drive, isn't it, as they take a timeout with a minute 14 left. If they can find the end zone here, 21 10, you get the ball first, you've got a chance. Watch Kurt Ains on this play right here. Fake the little draw. See, he's getting pressure outside by Corey Jackson. You know, just try to make something happen with his feet. 
And to have your quarterback have the best run of the day, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's positive yardage, so you want to get something going. Like I said, before the end of the half, you want to make something happen. Go into halftime with a little bit better morale, come out the second quarter, the second half, and hopefully change the game around. And when your offense is struggling, like Scotland has struggled, you don't care where that offensive spark is coming from. If the guy has to take off, <laughs> yeah, anything to move those chains. You have to make something happen. And I know Coach McNeil, uh, he will not rather than his quarterback that makes something happen, but anyone who's on the field can get their offense going. You have to see that happen. There's a lot of what-ifs here still, Darren, but if, if they can get a touchdown here, and if they get the ball first in the second half, which they will, and they can return it, potentially, potentially, it could be a 21-17 game, and the time of possession won't matter. It's points that count. Exactly, exactly. They're, they're losing this time of possession battle, but they still have a chance here. The game is still in hand. But they've got to convert some of these chances. A little inside handoff, and big Ahmad Galloway gets himself out of bounds after a pickup of eight. They will stop the clock, and the man from Denver showing his power there. He's a big guy at 225, six foot. Yes, he is. He's a tough guy to bring down. You saw him have the speed also to get outside right here on a little draw play that they're running to the weak side. See them give the ball to Galloway, cut outside, find an opening, break one tackle. And when he gets outside wide, you don't want to see too many cornerbacks in safety when to bring a guy who's 225 pounds down. That's a tough, tough task to ask them to do. Second down. Ames looking around. There's a lot of people pointing at other people there, and there's flags absolutely everywhere. Bobby Setzer took off fast, but he will claim he was drawn by Reese Hicks, and they never looked settled there, the Claymores. There was a lot of pointing and looking going on. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, Setzer is like a hair trigger. He sees anything moves and he's going to take off. 72 offense, five yard penalty. And it goes against Second the Claymores. Down. And their big right tackle. Watch the left guard right here. He's going to jump a little bit too fast before the, the ball is snapped. As soon as Setzer sees this movement, we will see him take off. See that little, little, that was actually, I don't know, that didn't look like too much of a move. Referee sees something I didn't see. Second down and long, and Ains falls over looking for something to happen, or Breo Franklin will get the easiest sack of his career and push him back another five yards, and Scotland from driving suddenly find themselves going backwards in the last two minutes of this first half. They do, and they have something positive going. Now they're going a little hurry up offense to maybe catch the Claymores off, bring the Galaxy off. They don't know what they're doing. They have guys on the field, halfway on the field. And Ains puts it up long for DeAndre Rubin. And he's out of bounds at the two-yard line. A great, what a play. Great throw and catch by Ains to Rubin. 33 yards just when they needed it. When we play right here, you, see, you can see the guy on the left of the screen. They're kind of a little mixed up. Once they get that, DeAndre Rubin just beats the coverage outside wide, makes a great catch, and keeps his feet in bounds. Great body control by DeAndre Rubin. And I have to say, an ex-Packer. Ex-Green Bay Packer. An well, ex-Frankfurt Galaxy man. He was in camp with them. They released him. So, first and goal, Scotland, trying to make a game of it. Ahmad Galloway mm -hmm. is in for the touchdown. That's what you need to see. That's what you need to see before going into the half. A two-yard run. This time, there are no flags to pull it back. And the Claymores, just like that, have given themselves a little bit of hope with 32 seconds left in the first half of week seven. The Scottish Claymores finally score a rushing touchdown. Man, that's a long time coming, but it's still a little bit a little bit of life right there, a little bit of life right there. You want to see that. We spoke about the last drive before going to the halftime. Now you start to see a little bit of rejuvenation by the, by the Claymores as a team. Hart tacks on the extra point. But well, Ains has found the big play. DeAndre Rubin with a great catch, and then Galloway finishing the job. You know, just like they ride their running backs in Denver, you're going to see Galloway, who's a Denver allocated running back, get a toss sweep to the outside, kind of get inside, and bounce it to the outside. Great move right there to suck the coverage in and bounce it outside and get into the end zone. Galloway showed a lot of ability on that run right there. Good vision and also great feet to get into the end zone. He showed a little bit of power early in the drive. On that play, he showed great vision. There was no further scoring in the first half, so join me after the break to see if Scotland can pull this one back. It was Scotland that had the last word in that first half, and now they will get the ball first, and uh, it's interesting that they put Ian Smart back there as well with Herb Haygood, and they want nothing to do with those returners. And Smart who's coughed it up so many times, this time just falls over, but uh, the squib kicks, they're not going to challenge Haygood, 
but uh, this is what happened in that first half. It was Hicks that opened the scoring, the former Washington Redskin from two yards out. And then Chad Hayes. And then Skip Hicks once again. But then they had the last word in that first half. Galloway with 32 seconds left. That's given them hope. Hopefully they can continue with that on this opening drive right here. And a flag comes in. Is that running play doesn't do an awful lot. We'll have to check out that one. I tell you what, the claimers are going to see flags in their sleep. You know what I'm so many yellow flags being thrown at them all day long. You're assuming this one's gone against the uh, the Claymores. Yeah, I'll have to assume. They oh, tell well. you not to assume, but... Clinton Ballard is definitely saying, yeah, that one's against Scotland. We... Well, well, well. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 98. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. There you go. Automatic first down. Big Corey Jackson, the man from the Cleveland Browns, is the guilty man, and that's uh, that's an expensive one to start off this second half. And the momentum continues to slip away from the Galaxy here. This is not the start Mike Jones would have wanted to this second half. No, it's not, and they have to be careful because of the Claymore offense has a little bit of life right now. You know, they're looking for it, and you see the head on the defensive coordinator for the Galaxy. Uh, he's not too happy about that call. He's, he knows how the game can change and switch, and it can happen right now. Look at the field position they've got. First down at their own 45-yard line, the Claymores. Nate Hibble is back in the ball game. And Maurice Hicks is doing some uh, shuffling and moving and picks up 11 yards. His second year here in Scotland. Mm -hmm. The man allocated here from the San Francisco 49ers. He watched Maurice Hicks on his run. A little counter action. Kick out block on Corey Jackson. He gets up in the hole, makes an excellent cut outside. If he were able to keep his feet, he might be in for six right there. But it's something, there's something special about that guy, Mari Six, and the way he runs. I mean, it just from, it's just something that just seems familiar about that. I don't know what it is. I have to come back to that later. I Any, think. Anyone would think he came from your grandmother's hometown or something. <laughs> down, first down, and here is. Maurice Hicks once again, and again, some nice moves, and uh, not bad from a guy from Emporia, Virginia. Yes, that's, that's right, Emporia, Virginia, hometown of the Fords, the mother's maiden name, the Ford family. And Maurice Hicks turns out he's going to try to be the work, the workhorse right now. You see the offensive lineman pulling, Hicks gets it outside, he has a great stutter move right there, and able to keep his balance. Positive yardage, pick up nine yards, sets up a, sh a short second and one. And they are getting some stuff going on the ground, aren't they? The Claymores shut down completely last week. Jack Minnell was talking, maybe we'll just throw it all game today, but no, they're getting something going. 77 yards rushing, second and short. And they'll stay on the ground and Hicks with three straight carries and 15 yards. Corey Jackson on the stop, but it's another first down Scotland. And yeah, they're coming out trying to pound the ball. Someone's and not Mike happy. Mike Jones is not happy at all. You see him right there, he's not positive. But they're running a straight, straight lead up the middle. Maurice Hicks, a small guy, can find a little path to get the ball in and run and get the yardage. And he's been doing it about 30 yards so far in this opening drive right here. And he's going to be the workhorse, it seems, though. And that's, that's more he can ask for. Vince Martino, the offensive coordinator, looking on. Yeah, Hicks, one carry for three yards in the first half. Five for 31 already here in the second half. Now they'll go back to Galloway. And Galloway's looking to bounce one outside. Getting a nice block from Ron Bellamy downfield. And that's Bellamy's strength, is blocking. And uh, Galloway picks up positive yardage as well. You've seen them run a lot of draw plays and, and quick hitting plays. They think they can attack the defense alignment of the Claymore, of the, of the Galaxy. Right here, a little quick hitting play, a little draw. They're bouncing inside and bouncing outside to try to get yardage and use the speed of their running backs. Galloway, a big kid, is able to get to the outside and get positive yardage. That's what you like to see. That's, the, that's what the NFL running back looks like right there. Well, there's a guy that tore up his knee at Alabama and uh, Denver drafted him, put him up on injured reserve, and you just get the feeling that even in these later weeks of the season, it's only just now that he's starting to feel confidence in that knee again. Now, Hibble, he's got some confidence in Scott McCready, the London-born receiver who won a Super Bowl ring on the practice squad of the New England Patriots a couple of years ago. And this impressive opening drive of the Scottish Claymores continues. Chris Brown on the tackle. Yeah, this is excellent play calling. Excellent play calling. They run the ball three of the four times. Now they throw a little quick hitting route on the outside. McCready does an excellent job. Who's known for just 
being a possession receiver. But you see right here, he makes a breaks a tackle and able to get positive yardage, putting this team in excellent position. And the momentum continues to shift. Scotland starting to rock and roll here a little bit. McCready, NFL Europe's leading receiver, moving the chains. First down, we got all kinds of stuff going on there. Again, I think uh, the officials are just going to have to pick a name, and it's probably going to be a Scottish one. I'm not going to guess this time. No, you're, uh, you've been pretty good most of the time. <laughs> I would hate to see us on the Claymore because they, they move the ball so well for so far. Well, you Five knew this was penalty. coming. Yeah. Still first down. When you get down into the red zone, this is the area you don't want to hurt yourself because you're so close to scoring. If you want to do anything to hurt yourself, do it further up the field. You never want to do anything negative, but if you do do it, that it has to happen. Do it earlier in the drive. When you get close to getting so many points in the red zone, how I like to call it the green zone, because it's time to score and make some points. So first down, Hibble. He has time. He has a man as well. Haygood looking to make something happen, cutting across the grain and just bouncing around close to the end zone. He's about three yards shy. But Herb Haygood is one of these guys. He gets his hands on the ball. Things start happening. I love the way Herb Haygood runs with the football. On kick returns, you see him right here catch the ball out in the flat, cut against the grain. He's not afraid to go inside, knowing it's going to be pursuit. He's got a chance to get hit pretty hard by the defensive line and the linebackers running. But he runs with a tough, physical nature, and that's what you want to see in a receiver. Well, some anxious whistling coming from uh, a crowd of 25,000 here in Frankfurt. They were enjoying the first half till the last 30 seconds or so. Now it's all changed. Hicks. Going in, touchdown, Why Scotland. Not? Why not? In four year Virginia. <laughs> Why not? I, Hicks was the, the workhorse for this drive. Great, great play calling. You're going to reward the guy that got you to this point. And Hicks has did that. That was a terrific drive. They executed, they overcame the flag. There's a new kind of sense of uh, spirit for these uh, Scottish Clamors offensively. Vince Martino, the offensive coordinator who takes care of the offensive line for Scotland. Happy enough with that. Sam Ritigliano, the old Cleveland Browns head coach, is upstairs. He's sending the plays in. Rob Hart is tacking on the extra point. And we talked about this, didn't we, in the last two minutes. If Scotland can score a touchdown here, if they can convert and score a touchdown on their first drive of the second half, we got ourselves a ball game. Guess what? We got ourselves a ball game here in Frankfurt. It's the Galaxy still leading, but only by four. I want you to watch the running back, Maurice Hicks, for the Scottish Claymores. They're running a strong side, tall sweep. Once he gets the football, all he wants to do is get into the end zone. He's going to take over the defender right here for the Galaxy and drags him to the end zone. That's called a willingness to want to score points and help your team out. Maurice Hicks brought them down the field and was a workhorse for this drive and was paid off in the end by getting a touchdown. The second touchdown now, rushing touchdown for the Scottish Claymore. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? They had seven plays there, five of them on the ground, and a team that couldn't do anything on the ground Last week, 12 carries against the Galaxy, 12 rushes, 12 yards against the Galaxy. Suddenly, they've got 111 here. Now, what can Lewis do? Can he find a return? Well, he's got some daylight, and he's dragged down by uh, Khalil Carter, who stayed at home and may have saved a big return. As it was, it's 26 yards. But the Galaxy now, they need to regroup and refocus, because that big lead of theirs is, has, has just been eaten away. It has, it has evaporated. And, you know, for them to come out now and get the football in their hands, we're gonna, it's be interesting to see what they do with O'Sullivan back in the game, what they do with this drive. They have to get some positive yards and get some points, because if they don't, you give the ball back to a hot Scottish Claymore offense. And that Claymore defense has got what it needed. It's got a rest. O'Sullivan can't find Willis, so that'll be second down and ten. And you know from your own perspective, Darren, there is nothing that re-energizes a defense more than your offense, putting a drive together and putting points on the board. You know, and talking to the players yesterday, that's one thing they said. Even though they're one and five, they said there wasn't any finger pointing going on. Both teams felt like the offensive defense that we're going to come together and try to find a way to make this thing better. And you see them doing that now. They're feeding off their offense, who's putting two touchdowns on the phone back to back. Now they're going to go out here and show what they can do. Well, they fake that end around again. And it's brought him a big result. First down yardage and a whole lot more for Skip Hicks. And Hicks 
inside the 10-yard line. What a run from the former Washington Redskin. And that's not what they wanted to show they could do. 57 yards, just when you thought momentum had shifted. Skip Hicks has taken it back for the Galaxy. And now that has become the longest run in NFL Europe this year. He had the longest run with a 56-yarder. Now he has the longest with a 57-yarder. So he got the two longest runs in NFL Europe this year. Skip Hicks, I tell you what, he's making a name for himself. He said he want to come over here and shake off the rust, and he's doing that. You might want to start calling him WD-40 because he has no rust anymore on him. <laughs> he's breaking to the outside, gets tripped up at the end. Excellent run, almost getting into the end zone. It's that misdirection stuff in the backfield that Dwayne Painter loves. It, it, it crosses up defenses. Had a big play out of it in the first half. And here comes Hicks once again. Not much doing on this occasion. But it just seems to freeze that whole defensive unit every time there's that razzle-dazzle stuff going on in the offensive backfield. In, in the NFL, we call that a copycat lead because you see that play a lot. We call that a ghost, ghost lead. Now that it has dwindled down to the NFL Europe, they're using that play. Excellent play because it keeps that defense in at home. does not allow him to crash down on the lead run by the running back because he has to honor the receiver coming out, coming out wide. Dwayne Painter, the offensive coordinator, owner of a Super Bowl ring. Second down, Lewis is the motion man. O'Sullivan has time. Now he feels some pressure, and he's brought down from behind. Damian Gregory will get the sack. Excellent play by Damian Gregory. The Scotland defense, you know, they, they gave a big run, but as long as they can hold this team to three points, maybe. You watch the right defense tackle right here. Gregory, with the move, beats his offensive lineman for the, for the uh, Galaxy. Great ball rush and, and, and spin. Gets the quarterback O'Sullivan on the ground. Relentlessness to the, back, to, the, to the quarterback. And that's what you want to see in your defensive lineman. The Scotland defensive lineman have been playing well all year. They've been holding this team together, and you see that right there. Third and goal from the 11 after the sack. O'Sullivan feeling some pressure from Cedric Scott. Now he rolls out. The pressure's coming again. He's got nowhere to go. Great hustle once again from those big defensive linemen. Cedric Scott was in the mix of it. Gavin Walls was there, and O'Sullivan just had nowhere to go. The coverage was good in the end zone, and the defensive linemen were making his life hard. Yeah, excellent coverage in that play and excellent pressure. You know, those are two combinations that make it tough for offense. And now they're forcing a the figure. You can call this a win for the Scotland defense, even though they allowed them to get the long run by Skip Hicks to keep them out of the end zone, a place where the Frankfurt Galaxy has been struggling. You know, it keeps them into the game. Now they're only going to be down seven if he's able to convert on the field goal. And it's Ralph Kleiman who's got a terrific leg, but he can be erratic. 28 yards, we've got flags everywhere. Those flags came in before the kick. And Ralph has been kicking in this league as uh, Skip Hicks is probably thinking, oh, 57-yard run, and we're settling for three. Yeah, he's not too happy about that. You know, it, to run that long, 57 yards, uh, you can see how tired he is right now. He would love to get in the end zone and, and continue to you know, get points on the for his team, but that wasn't able to happen. Now, that could be expensive. They've pushed Kleinman back a further 10 yards, so what should have been a 28-yard chip shot, suddenly, now, because of that, Jonathan Ingram, the guilty man, becomes 38-yarder, and for Kleinman, that's maybe territory. That's an iffy situation right there, and, you know, it's funny to see when a team is pushed back a little bit further, what happens on this field goal. In fact, it's just a five-yard penalty, so it's only 33 yards. But Ralph certainly has the leg. If he can get the accuracy, it should be a chip shot for him, and it just about gets through, and it's three points for the Frankfurt Galaxy. But we got another flag. Well, the Claymore's had points taken off the board because of a penalty. Is that going to happen to Frankfurt here? Tell you what, today the referees have had more meetings than Congress. <laughs> They've been meeting all day long, talking to one another. Offside, 59 defense. The penalty is declined. That's the result of the play, successful field goal. The Claymores punted on their following drive, so we'll pick up the action on Frankfurt's ensuing possession. First down, O'Sullivan. Steps up, there's one downtown for Derek Lewis. Lewis can't bring it in. That had touchdown written all over it if O'Sullivan had managed to lead his man. Lewis made a great effort, but the official was there immediately to rule it out of bounds. The fans do not like it. And it has to be a mix-up mix of coverage to have a guy this wide open down the field. Close 
It looked to me like he had both feet in. Well, maybe this angle will give it to us. Foot on the line. Foot on the line. As a quarterback, I know Sullivan wants that pass back. All he has to do is throw it down the more of the middle of the field. This is going to be a touchdown. He'd so beaten the coverage, Derek Lewis. I mean, there was nobody home. Had to be a mix-up in coverage to have a guy that wide open. So the Claymores get away with one. And O'Sullivan would love to have that one back. Mm -hmm. Haddad is the motion man. O'Sullivan will put it up on second down. Pressure comes, and he just has to dump it off to the big tight end, Chad Hayes. The only tight end left on the uh, Galaxy roster after Chris Edmonds went down with a knee injury earlier. And that'll bring up third down and four. You watch O'Sullivan on his play. This is one thing I watched him on film he has the ability to do, to find his third option. His progressions have gotten extremely better each game that I watched him play. You know, he had an option out there with a dad. He was looking for him in the outside flat area at first. Came back across the middle and saw his tight end crossing the field. That's called going through your progressions and finding your second and third option. Plenty of time, and he's found her dad once again, and now it's a foot race. Her dad still on his feet inside the 20 and eventually dragged down but not until he made a huge play. Gerald Dixon saved a touchdown, but a 62-yard pass on third down. And we speak about a dad working over the middle in those zones. That's his specialty right there, and you see it right here. This play right here is a play that they've run over and over. Last game, he was very successful catching the ball in a little Texas route. The dad breaks the coverage, gets inside of the defender, and then he makes a move right there to beat the safety, last man in coverage, and almost takes it to the house. Great effort by the Claymore, by Dixon and the Claymore to get him on the ground, but excellent throwing catch by a dad who's a tough receiver to handle over the middle with all that room. Well, the one knock against a dad is he's not the quickest, but oh my goodness me, this fella gets open. Not much doing there on the ground. Jeff Cheney is gang tackled at the line of scrimmage, but this was the big fear for, for, for the Scottish claimers. They wanted to get Haddad out of there. That's why they made the moves in the safeties, and he still made three catches for 99 yards on them today. Yeah, I spoke to James Lewis yesterday. He said he wanted to cover Haddad and, and come down. He's going to play him in a slot. When you send a guy in motion like Haddad with the quickness that he has, no matter who you bring down on him, you don't keep proper leverage and have help actually maybe run a combo coverage on a guy like that. It's going to be tough for any defender to try to handle a guy like that. And the dads, you know, that's especially working over the middle and getting and working those zones. Second down, O'Sullivan. With time once again, now he's flushed. Looking. And just getting himself out of bounds. And that's going to bring up third down and goal. The, the Claymores were prepared for this route right here. It's the same play that they had scored on with Hayes over the middle. This time, he wasn't as open, trying to run the same clearing route with the tight end and have a follow a receiver behind him to try to take that zone away. But the Claymores were prepared. And once again, we'll see the Frankfurt Galaxy get installed once they get into the red zone. We'll see what they do here on third down. Hopefully, they get some points on the board. Third down. Frankfurt up by seven, looking for more. Lewis goes in motion. Cheney has the ball, and Cheney with the cutback, and he's cut down at the five-yard line. Once again, this Scottish Claymore's defense holding firm. Aiden Durde, the London-born linebacker, will be credited with that tackle, and a real good open field tackle from the first-year man here in NFL Europe. Oh, excellent tackle right here. He's trying to knock Cheney back to London. He came here and filled his own, puts him back on his back right there. And I'm... I'm a little bit confused about the play calling right there as far as you want to run outside wide when you're in, a, in the red zone instead of going straight up the gut. The closest distance and the quickest between two points is a straight line. I don't know why you want to try to go out wide right there. Kleinman tacks on another three points, a 23-yard field goal, and it's a 10-point ball game. Neither team added to their score in the rest of the third quarter, so let's pick up the action with the Claymore's first possession of the fourth quarter. Well, Ains definitely provided a little bit of something for him. He's going straight down the field, and he's got a man as well. What a terrific catch by Ronald Bellamy, who scored the winning touchdown. And Bellamy's going in, but they're ruling that he was touched 35 yards. And we keep saying this every week. When this fella gets his hands on the ball, exciting things happen. They just don't get into him enough. The, the first thing you think about is playmaker. Ains puts the ball in the spot. He's attacked down the field. Bellamy with the 
jumping and leaping grab and able to hold on to the football as he comes down. We spoke to Bellamy, he said, all I want to do is get the ball in my hands and I'm going to make plays. And you see him do that right there with a great body control, holding the ball, getting the first down, getting this team going with some positive yardage. And looking sharp, the safety man definitely uh, touched him down. That was sharp, not sharper. I got him up here with me. <laughs> but first down for Scotland. And we've got flags everywhere, so Maurice Hicks needs to uh, just conserve his energy. Your nickname is Sharp, though, isn't it? Just uh, take the arm Many off nicknames, there. many nicknames. you got many nicknames? I say I'm sharper than Sharp because I have to. False start. <laughs> 77 offense. That's Five the yard old penalty. Offensive line problem Still once first again down. for the Scottish Claymores. And Vince Martino, I'm sure, will be sitting down with his guys after this one and reviewing some film. He's a fellow on the right. Today, you've seen that a lot with the offensive line for the Claymores. I don't know whether or not they can't hear their quarterback's cadence well enough, but they're not sure about when the ball is getting snapped, and they move a little bit quicker, and they're not moving together. And it's loud in here in Ball Stadon, but I don't know if it's that loud. You like my, my German? Was that okay? For a first Close. time, for Close. a guy from uh, Virginia. By Wisconsin. Haygood's bouncing around in there. They'll try the draw play, see what happens. And Hicks has definitely caught him uh, just a little bit cold there. Asa Francis and Chris Brown combining on the stop. And we have an injured Claymore down as well. And from here, it looks like the left tackle, Marcus Ogden. Well, that's a guy they can't lose. Coach Pinot said that's their best offensive line, but they definitely don't want to have to lose him. Well, he was hurt last week. But this doesn't look too good at all, because when those big fellas go down and stay down, you know they're hurt. Yeah, you definitely do. You don't want to say he's just staying on the ground to, to catch his breath, because he definitely looks like he's very injured on this play. But he... Get up, big fella. Another... Looks like it's a leg... Another leg leg injury. Well, Morgan... Morgan Pierce from the Pittsburgh Steelers will come in. He was in camp with the Dolphins last year. And who's kind of at home here in Frankfurt. He's got a, his mother and indeed a brother live in Germany. That really doesn't look good for Marcus Ogden. Can't put any weight on that left foot. Well, we've seen one guy leave this game in an ambulance. We don't want to see any more. You, you're going to say that's the nature of the game. Guys want to get injured, but you never, you never want to see that happen. So, Scotland whose offensive line is struggling, lose their best offensive lineman, and Ains, with the keeper, rolls, finds a man, McCready gets past one tackler, gets first down yardage, and then his gang tackled, and Ains is six for six in this ball game. I tell you, Ains is leading his team down the field right here. They're, they're liking to get Ains on the outside with the boot plays. You watch him right here, he's going to fake right there to the running back, boot leg out to the... The wide side of the field. They found the receiver McCready in the, in the flat. McCready does an excellent job of, of missing, making one guy miss and then getting positive yardage right there. McCready's a guy, we said he was just a possession receiver, but right now he's showing to be a big play receiver. They just want to get the ball in his hands. And he's, he's making something happen. Six catches for 54 yards, McCready. Ains goes over the middle, can't find McCready. That's one of the differences from last week. Scott McCready, who leads the league in receptions, only had one last week. But this time, they got him involved. I mean, as you say, not big plays, but just enough to keep things moving. And the coaches have no, but they need to get him involved in the game. A guy that's your leading receiver and a leading receiver in the league, you definitely want to get him involved because you're not going to win if you don't get your best players the football. And he's had a week of celebrating. We're talking soccer now. You know, you've heard of Queen's Park Rangers, I presume? Yes, I have. You have? That's his team. Very impressed. Oh, really? I follow many sports. Ains is in trouble. Bounces away. He's elusive and slippery, looking end zone, no one home. With Marcus Healthman, the tight end, was floating around there, but I think Ains was just getting rid of that one under intense pressure. Deepest alignment for the Galaxy are putting intense pressure behind. Ains has the ability to move. Ains has the ability to move to find and get, create extra room and extra time for uh, his receivers to get open. But with the pressure that they're doing now, it looks like it's going to be a little draw, a quarterback draw, but he didn't have time to find any holes, throws it away, give himself another opportunity to score. Third down and ten. They are three for, for eight in this ball game. The ball is on the 15-yard line. They need to get it inside the five. Pressure comes. Ains feels the pressure. Now bounces out. He's got a lot of work to do. He's at the ten, and he's inside the five. What a run from Kurt Ains. Excellent run by Kurt Ains. Excellent run. 
with the pocket collapsing all around him. Ains has just popped out like a cork out of a champagne bottle, and he's almost gone in. Knocked out by Ricky Sharp. Um, I, I tell you what, we talked about how Kurt Ains can find room and create time with his feet. Right here, he's looking down the field, looking down the field. The pocket collapsed on him. He still finds a way to get out of there. I don't know how he got out of that scrum and almost gets into the end zone. Shows a little bit of fleet of foot right there. Well, 34 yards on the ground on two carries from Kurt Ains takes that all the way to the one-yard line. Scotland threatening here. First down. Hicks goes in. Touchdown, Scotland. Second touchdown of the day for Maurice Hicks. So Skip Hicks gets two for Frankfurt. Maurice Hicks, and they are not related, gets two for Scotland. And we could have a three-point ball game once again with ten minutes left. And this small but dedicated traveling army of Claymore's fans enjoyed that one. Yeah, they have something to celebrate about now. With the game going to be 27-24 with this conversion. And you think about the three-point field goals that the Frankfurt Galaxy have been able to get. They haven't been able to punch the ball in and get seven points and score touchdowns. It might come back to haunt them later in the game, and we're seeing that right now. So Rob Hart from the Premiership City of Southampton will attempt the extra point. And it's good. And just like that, Scotland, who trailed 21-3, keep hanging around. And Kurt Ains has brought them to within three. Maurice Hicks with the touchdown. Scotland back in it. Well, on a hot day, players want all the ice they can get hold of, but this is not where Marcus Ogden wanted to be iced. On his left ankle and clearly in pain. But the Scottish Claymores are still sticking around. Kurt Ains, once again, making things happen with his feet. And this is a dimension that just as J.T. O'Sullivan makes ha things happen with his scrambling for Frankfurt, Ains has the same ability for Scotland. Right, to make things happen on the feet and, and on the go. You know, you want to improvise whenever you're out there and just get your team going, whether it's throwing the football, running with your feet. And Ains, just like O'Sullivan we spoke about earlier, is doing an excellent job of doing that. And Frankfurt in this second half have been a, a team of big plays, but not of touchdowns. Yeah. You know, at 21-3 down, I thought, oh dear, this is going to be a long mm -hmm. Sunday afternoon. That's that's the nature of the game right there. You never know when the game can come back, a team can come back and keep fighting. And I tell you what, the wherewithal of the, the Claymores is just something that's impressed me uh, today. Derek Lewis, who's had a busy afternoon, looking to try and find a seam, and he's got one as well. And Lewis steps out of bounds. At the 37 yard line, 32 yard return from Lewis, but there might have been more there. But Ames is the guy that made that last touchdown pass. Yeah, it is. When you look at the stat sheet, you're going to see a one yard run by Maury Six. But what set this run up was on a crucial third down. You see Haynes right here in the pocket where he's just getting collapsed. He has the, the, the mind sense to get out in the pocket and make something happen with his feet. Great awareness by Ames. And that sets up the one yard run by Hicks, who does an eight job of breaking and get, crossing the plane for the touchdown. I tell you, second score by Hicks. He's done a great job today. Certainly has. Now Jens Pedersen, the Swedish linebacker, has checked into the ball game as we get a, uh, a, a host of flags. I think that was Patrick Venska, the German tackle that may be called Ball's here. Start. 60 on the offense, five-yard penalty. There goes the Still first flags down. again. But Jens Pedersen has come in. The middle linebacker from Sweden is a real hitter, a real run support guy. And it was interesting, he took charge of the defensive huddle when he came in. Yeah, he definitely did. And he's one of those guys who just want to get into the mix and make something happen. Uh, he's actually in for McLean, like you said, and he just wants to fly around and make things happen himself. I wonder if McLean's okay. He's not in the game right now. First down and 15 for Frankfurt, who still have the Claymores hanging around. Skip Hicks, who's closing in on 100 yards on the day, will pick up another five there. That'll bring up second down and ten. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if McLean's just taking a breather or whether he's in some kind of trouble. Ryan Myers, the other busy outside linebacker on the stop there. But McLean has been so productive for the Scottish Claymores, the well, all season, really. Yeah, he has. He's a guy that can make plays all over the field, whether it's, you know, making plays, tackling a guy behind the line of scrimmage, or making plays in pass coverage. He's a multifaceted linebacker. You know, he reminds me of Ray Lewis. I don't know if he's on, on that level yet, but he's on his way. Just taking a breather at the moment, and the car pass is completed all the way down to Jason Willis from the Seattle Seahawks by JT O'Sullivan. That should be a first down Frankfurt.
and that's the pass, pass we were talking about before. O'Sullivan's having a little bit of trouble of finding his receivers outside wide on the deep comebacks. But with this throw right here, he puts it right on the mark. Great catch by Willis, able to haul the ball in and get close to a first down. I say he got it. Sticky. I think he got it too. There you, you go. and I speak as one. As one. And we're both right. That's the, <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to be. That's the best way to be. Well, it looked like a first down when they, uh, With the game clock when they spotted it. Mike Jones says, well, please set the game clock one inch, to five nine minutes, five ten seconds. Yards. Just move those please chains. Please reset the game clock to nine minutes, five seconds. First down, Thank Frankfurt you. up by three. We're in the fourth quarter. Plenty of time left. What we thought was going to be a blowout has turned into a fascinating game. When, I bet you when Frankfurt had the game 21-3, they didn't think it was going to be 27-24 with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Especially against a Scotland offense that's just put nothing up all season long. Hayes is the motion man. Play action from O'Sullivan, who's got all the time in the world to go downtown to Derek Lewis. And it's incomplete. They had double coverage there. And I think it was your buddy James Lewis excellent that was there to break it up on the other e Lewis. Excellent play by James Lewis. The safety before we saw a play down the deep, deep down the field where the safety lost track of the ball in the air. You watch right here, James Lewis turning his back, turning his head to the football and finding where the ball is, getting the hand up there and knocking the ball away on a deep pass where you thought that Lewis had actually an opening right there. That's what you want to see in your safety to have recovery speed to be able to find the ball in the air and get to the, the receiver even though they might be beat, beaten on the play. Second down, her dad is the motion man. They know how dangerous he can be. A lot of time and a completion once again. 12 yards straight down the field. This time if they do find Lewis. Khalil Carter, the nickelback, making the stop with some help from uh, right. But 12 yards, first down. And that's a great throw and catch by Sullivan to find an opening in his own and getting to Lewis, who makes a great catch in traffic. He's had a lot of time on those last two plays, O'Sullivan. A lot of protection there. Yeah. First down. Now fake that end around again to Skip Hicks, and it seems to produce yards for him every time. It's done it once again. 15 yards for Skip Hicks. Thomas Wright pushing him out of bounds. But every time you see Lewis go in motion there, you can see the Claymores thinking, is this the end around? And Hicks takes it, and it's first down. I tell you this. Scottish Claymore de defense is going to be seeing this play in their sleep. Skip Hicks breaking to the outside and almost breaking a team. Great tackle by Wright to bring him down and keep him from scoring a touchdown. But Skip Hicks has the ability to break to the outside with that speed and almost score. The thing is, Darren, the Claymores play like they've never seen it before every time it happens. Right, right. But it's a tough play to stop because you have the great blocking that the offensive line is giving the Galaxy. No matter who's back there running the ball, it's going to be tough to stop. A big number 44 as well. There goes Hicks again, dancing around. Over 100 yards, the man from the Cincinnati Bengals. He may have a shot at finding a home in Cincinnati, this guy. Yeah, with the running back situation that they have there, uh, you know they drafted the kid, who's going to be an excellent player, player for him, Perry. Uh, they have Rudy Johnson, who's an excellent back, did a great job last year stepping in. Uh, but Skip Hicks feels he has a chance to come in there and kind of, kind of shake things up. He has NFL experience, so you know he can come in there and play. Now it's going to be up to him to come to camp well prepared to try to challenge for a spot. Second down and six. The other Lewis, Jermaine Lewis, has checked into the ball game. Again, lots of time. Hayes makes the catch. No pressure at all on O'Sullivan. He just had to wait till someone got open. Pedersen on the stop, but Hayes just got himself open first down. O'Sullivan right here has plenty of time. He's sitting back in the pocket, just finding and waiting for his tight to come open across the middle. Great catch by Hayes getting his shoulders upfield to get positive yardage. O'Sullivan has had plenty of time today. I don't know if he's gotten pressure or anything. The only way you might can mix this up with the defensive line being so tired for Scotland is to try to bring some guys from the outside and maybe do some blitzes to try to, you know, shake O'Sullivan up a little bit. Because if you don't, he's going to pick you apart all day. Well, he's picking him off at the moment. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Just under six minutes left. Well, look who's come up with that, Damian Gregory. And that's the play you need right there as a defense. It seems so. Scotland, the Scottish defense has played extremely well when they had their back against the walls. It's like everybody, everybody lost it in the sun. He never gets the ball right here. You see O'Sullivan kind of pull himself out of the pocket without grabbing hold of the ball. And then the ball's on the ground. Gregory, with great awareness, jumps right on it.
And now there's a chance for Ahmad Galloway to start putting on some heat. Mason Unk in on the stop. Unk, whose uh, heritage is from the Netherlands, and he's been into buying the clogs. I'm not sure where Damien Gregory's heritage is, but I know he's going to go back to Tampa for training camp, and he'll be telling everyone about that one. Yeah, he will. Big Damien Gregory has made some plays today, whether it's tackling guys in the backfield, getting pursued and pressure on a quarterback. He's been very active, and now with the fumble calls right there and jumping on the ball, he's helping his defense out. They may lose today, Scotland, but they're restoring some pride with this performance on both sides of the ball. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they might lose today. The way they're playing right now, it's going to be a tough one. Galloway again looking to try and reverse the field because there was nothing doing and that is a painful loss He was chopped down by Clinton Ballard who weighs 330 Oh man, and Clint that is Ballard. a load. You do not want to run no. into that man. No, that's like running into a stone wall right there Clinton Ballard picked him up and threw him like a sack of potatoes right there And you and running back when you have these change fields and you slow yourself down the pursuit is going to always get you Mike Jones chewing his nails for the second week in a row. What should have been a routine game against Scotland is proving to be a lot harder than anyone anticipated. But Kurt Ames trying to keep it alive on third and long. And he's got McCready, and McCready will pick up first down. 11 yards for the man from West London, Chris Brown, on the stop. First down, Scotland. I tell you what, McCready is doing an excellent job right here. He's their go-to guy on third down. He's working the slot has the ability to find the open zone right here. He's in great coverage by Chris Brown, who almost gets the ball out right there, but great throw and catch. Ains finds a way to get it to McCready. He's the guy that he knows he wants to go to on third down. It's interesting, the defensive backs having forced one fumble are trying it every time, but McCready fooled you once, but not twice. Not twice. They fake the pitch. And Ains will try and scramble over Clinton Ballard in there, and Kurt Ains does Bobby not Setzer. want to go running into Clinton Ballard and Bobby Setzer. You know sooner or later Bobby Sensor or Corey Jackson will get their hands on the quarterback. Like they said, it's just a matter of time. If the quarterback sitting back there with excellent coverage by the defensive backs, you know they'll get their chance to get a couple of hits on the Kurt Ames. And in the middle, big number 99 as well. And there's no clouds in the sky today, but I mean, that must have looked like a cloud descending on Kurt Ames when he went up the middle there and saw big number 99. They definitely did. They definitely did. You know, the guys inside have been able to free up their defensive ends and allow them to do what they do on the outside and put pressure on the quarterback. Loss of a yard. Second down and 11. For Scotland, the pocket collapsing again. Ames rolls out, finds a man. McCready has a lot of work to do. Can't get past the first tackler. Dustin Cohen read it all the way. They'll give McCready three, but no more than that. And yet another third and long for the Scottish Claymores. Another third and long. And it, it, who know created this third and long was Dustin Cohen. An excellent tackle by him out there in the flat. Whenever you ask a linebacker to cover a receiver out in the flat, you're hoping that you can win that matchup. And Dustin Cohen did a great job of bringing McCready down who's made a miss a couple of times today, but not right then. We're inside three minutes. This may already be four-down territory for the Scottish Claymores. They may not get their hands on the ball again. Frankfurt showing blitz. Ames steps up, looks, looks, just puts it upstairs, and his receiver, McCready, can't get anywhere near it. He was locked up with Ricky Sharp, and that'll bring up fourth down. And they send out Nick Murphy in the punting unit. No thoughts there whatsoever of going for it on fourth down. That's one of the times we try to go to the well a little bit too often. Uh, headed to McCready trying to get the ball back. And that's a great win by Ed O'Neill's defense right there. A crucial third down win for them. Well, her dad has not really had an opportunity to return anything because Murphy has been punting so well. If Murphy can pin him deep here, And they're going to fake it. Oh, no, they're not. Murphy's, uh, well, what on earth was Murphy doing there? Whatever happened, it worked. We've got flags all over the shop once again. The ball is down at the 25-yard line. I thought Murphy was going to take off. And then he's kicked it. Yeah, he got pressure right there, but it might be a legal man downfield because he held the ball so long. A lot of flags last week between these two teams. Some teams just bring out the yellow stuff in each other. You know, they had meetings like Congress, like I said before, and they throwing these flags all over the place. They've been very active today. The referees feel as though they want to be part of the game, too. And you know, they, two I, fouls I know they don't like the play. flags, but... We have an ineligible man downfield on the kick in the 22 offense. That penalty is declined. We have holding in the 28 offense. That penalty is accepted. 
10 yards from the previous spot. We play fourth down. We get to do it all over again. You had your choice of fouls. You watch the outside rusher right there, Lewis. Does a great job putting pressure on the punter and not allowing him to punt the ball on time. No, number of players downfield before the kick. Murphy needs to get off a real good one. Now, is he going to... Well, it takes a terrific Scotland bounce and goes out of bounds at the 32-yard line. So once again, Nick Murphy will come out of this game saying, well, I did my bit. Yes, he did. 51 yards on the punt from Nick Murphy. The Vol Stadion is under construction for next year's Soccer World Cup here in Germany. And this is uh, a crane that's got uh, some red and white stuff. I mean, I like to see red and white stripes at any time, Darren, but uh, I'm not quite sure what that decoration is for unless they're going to put you and me in there afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm going to fit or get up that, there that high. Looks like someone forgot their Christmas ornament. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> well, this game has certainly been interesting. Scotland, who couldn't run the ball last week, have put up 137 on the ground today. Frankfurt, 149. See, this right here is an all-important drive for the, for the Galaxy to try to seal the game right here with this it's far from over as well we've got the two minute warning and scotland have all three timeouts hicks will attempt to just chew up the clock and he is crunched after a one yard gain and scotland burn one of those timeouts and the time of possession thing has turned around as well remember in the first half we were saying frankfurt's dominated scotland. with about Their three minutes to go in the first half it's uh, it's got a lot closer timeout. and uh, jack mcnell's team deserves a lot of credit for sticking around and, and mike jones and also Kirk, coach mcnell for the uh, Claymores, they have to say this reminds them, them of something. And this is similar to the game last week in which Frankfurt had the ball. The game was still in the balance. He didn't know which way it was going to go, 15-13. Frankfurt went down and drove the ball, ran off the clock to win the game. And the one thing we know with Jones, he, he won't be a hero. You know, he's no gunslinger. He'll just say, if I have to grind it out, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And if the fans don't like it, hey, we want the win. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's all about, winning. And they're so close to being eligible for the World Bowl. There's no reason to risk anything right now. They have to leave. They're just trying to make sure they can get a first down and the game will be over. Big now, I'm sure, is thinking turnovers. He got an unexpected one when Damien Gregory uh, was Johnny on the spot when that uh, snap got lost. That looked like it was going to be the game killer right there. They definitely, have had the opportunity. they definitely have had the opportunity today. And I think Mike Jones, even if they win this, Mike Jones will be reminding his guys that they've made hard work of this one. O'Sullivan looks one way, then looks the other. Now this is where he's dangerous. And he improvises, finds Corey McIntyre at the 40-yard line for a six-yard completion. Ryan Myers was on the stop, but second down. And uh, that is the O'Sullivan two warning. coming up with some inter improvisation warning. to take us to the two-minute warning. His Galaxy lead by three. When I spoke about the game being a mirror image of last week's game, you watch O'Sullivan right here. Last week, he had a drive in which he got a crucial third down by scrambling and using his feet to make something happen. He does the same thing right here, finding McIntyre out in the flat by buying himself some time with his feet and making plays on the run. Uh, O'Sullivan is a guy that you want to have the ball in his hands at the end of the game because he finds a way to help you win. It's effective, but uh, remember what Mike Jones said about uh, his scrambling quarterback. Dogs that chase traffic don't live long. <laughs> yeah, chase cars don't live long, exactly. That's one of the famous quotes of all time. He doesn't want this fella flying around, but you know what? Go. He makes plays. Less than two minutes remaining. Frankfurt looking to convert the third down, and they've oh. got Alan Harper oh. on the hard count. Oh, my goodness. You hate to see that. I know Alan Harper is just kicking himself right now. Boy, oh boy. 99 defense, contact. Five yards. You've got penalty. a third and four to defend. After the five you can't penalty, give them to it by penalty. First down. You watch the Leicester Fence tackle right here. Doesn't keep his eyes on the ball, and you wonder why he's right over top of the football. How could he not see the ball get snapped? You're taught, you're taught time and time again. Watch the football. That's when your key is to move on the sideline. You see Jack McNeil just just upset right there because you just watch the football and then you'll know when the ball is going to get snapped. They still have a chance here though. There's still enough time. They stop the Galaxy to get the ball back. They still have two first, uh, two uh, timeouts. Scotland, but they're going to see an awful lot of skip hits now. And that's another first down and time is literally running out for the Scottish Claymores. 
That might all but do it. Let's get picks. He's carried his team all day long. Before the game, he was very animated, telling his team how important this game was, not to overlook, because they have a tough match next week against Berlin. He wanted to come out today and set the tone, and he has done that. Yep, Frankfurt pretty much there now. They won by two last week in Glasgow. They're winning by three here. You feel some sympathy for Scotland, who've certainly got no reason to hang their heads after this performance. But if you look realistically at it as Hicks goes down, you have to say that, frankly, Frankfurt have had an awful lot of opportunities to put this game away and, and kill it cold. Yes, they have. They've had plenty of opportunities. The fumble calls the second of the down half. in the red zone by Gregory. Had a chance to drive down the field and get some points. Uh, you know, they came out of the second half and fought hard. Coach Mike Jones, you know, he's happy about the win. But he can't be pleased that he's given up some opportunities and his team came out and let a team come back from 21, a 21 and 3 deficit. But the Scotland has fought hard. I mean, what more can you ask for? I tell you what, uh, the team to come here 1 and 5 to play at the level that they played at today, they know they didn't just want to sit down and lay down and not continue to fight. And that shows what Coach McNeil has the opportunity to do is teach his team that look, even though we're 1 and 5, we're going to go out there and play hard and fight hard. You never know what can happen. Jimmy McLean said, OK, we're one on five. That doesn't mean we stop playing. Exactly. And, and you kind of think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number and then Jack McNeil said, this is a great group of kids. Receiver. Nobody's given up. And you think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Receiver. And then you see this, and you know what? They're not lying. Yeah. These guys are playing hard. Great character on this team. And, you know, to continue to play, like I said, down 21-3, to three, they could have just hung their heads and said, OK, let's go home. Let's yeah. get ready for the season to end. They fought back and gave themselves a chance to win, but it just didn't work out for them today. Second down and long, they'll keep it real safe. Hicks will just pick up four yards inside as the clock ticks down to one minute. And the final timeout for the Scottish Claymores has been time taken. Scotland. So they'll get the, the ball back. Whether well, well, they'll be able to do anything with it or not is another matter. They have a long field to go. But you see crazier things happen. I can give you examples. Uh, Doug Flutie. Game. Boston College against Miami, throws the ball, Hail Mary, 62 yards down the field. Uh, another flea flicker in the NFL has happened numerous times in the last play. And I don't want to say it, fourth and 26 in Philadelphia. Down. I knew you had to bring that up. <laughs> Somehow, some way, it's not, it's not fourth down, it's a third down, but you find a way to bring up fourth and 26. Oh, that's going to live with us for will, years and years. You will never live that down. Never. Only way we'll live that down is coming back this year and winning the Super Bowl. And that's our plans to do that this year. Uh, well, as the marks of battle there, poor old Nick Eason. He's going to need some, uh, well, he's had a wardrobe malfunction, hasn't he? Let's put it that way. Stuff right. coming out of the front of his uh, jersey there. Skip Hicks has put in 122 yards. Not quite a career day. We're not going to go back there but to tell you who had the career day against, because I've already beaten up Darren enough as it is. He may start beating me up back. But i tell you what, he's definitely improved his yardage per, per carry average. He came in average only 3.2 yards. Now, he's definitely added to that. Hicks will be stopped. <laughs> and so, just like in Glasgow a week ago, the game kind of peaching out a little bit with Frankfurt doing enough just to hold on. The Berlin Thunder, the other team that looked World Bowl bound, have won today against the Rhine Fire. With Frankfurt winning here, it, it's the Thunder are definitely in, and the Ryan Fire are almost certainly eliminated. But they're the only team that could catch Frankfurt now. But they would have to win all their remaining games. Frankfurt would have to lose all theirs, and not only that, Frankfurt would have to lose to the Fire by 19 points. So I think these guys, just like the Thunder, can start planning for the World Bowl. And we've never had an NFL Europe like this, where two teams have just gone out and been the pick of the crop. Right, definitely separated themselves time from the rest Frankfurt. of the league. First you look at these two the teams, you know they're the best in the league because of how they play. You know, they've beaten the Cologne twice this year, uh, came out and played well against Amsterdam, lost one game, but bounced back, uh, beat a team that's going to definitely contend with them uh, next week uh, for the World Bowl. We'll see. Uh, Berlin and Frame are going to match up. You, get, be a tough you game. get that game, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm, and I'm excited about it. I think, you know, I think Frankfurt will maybe have to play a bit better all-round game if they're going to win this World Bowl. I definitely feel as though that's the case. Uh, I haven't had a chance to see Berlin too much, but from what I hear, uh, they're a team that knows how to put teams away. And, and this, you want to say that Frankfurt should have came in here and just blown out uh, Scotland, but you know that didn't happen. More, I would say that's because of Scottish and how they play, and then the, the team that they have, have the character they have to continue to fight. But a team that wants to win a World Bowl has no win to close the deal and end it. 
Yeah, the Galaxy, if we're going to be critical, should have closed this deal down a long time ago. As it is, realistically, Scotland will have one play. That's a, a nice little punt that's fielded at the six-yard line by Alfonso Roundtree, who would love to be the hero, and it's not going to happen, and he needs to get out of bounds quick. Three seconds left. A nine-yard return. Very nicely placed punt as well from Mike Barr from the Steelers. And it all comes down to one play. We'll see if they can find some magic right here. Well, effectively, it's first and 85. Basically. That's what we say. Basically, actively, philosophically. That's not a word, actually, so I made that one up. <laughs> Well, what is it? what's the coverage scheme when you don't want to get caught underneath? Cover four. I think Frankfurt may go cover. Are you trying to get, bring up the fourth and 26? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Well, you just send a guy back there and just they, have him sit back and, and line his feet where the end zone is because it's not a fourth and 26. It's a, like you said, a first and 85. Ains puts it upstairs. It's DeAndre Rubin that's bouncing around, but they can't do anything with it. It's game over. It's another heartbreaking loss for the Scottish Claymores. It's another tough win for the Frankfurt Galaxy. And Mike Jones, in his first year as a head coach, has moved within sight of a World Bowl appearance. Well, Jack McNeil has to be proud of his, his troopers for coming out here and fighting and making the game closer than what, what it was going to be expected to be. Two teams gave everything under a very hot sun here in Frankfurt at the end. It's the hometown Galaxy that have taken that has taken it by a narrow margin at 21-3. We were thinking blowout in the end. Frankfurt will be grateful to hold on for 27-24. Well, there's more action after the break when we'll check out the highlights of the game between the Berlin Thunder and the Rhine Fire. So the Claymore's nightmare season continues and Frankfurt, even though they haven't officially clinched yet, are in a healthy position to bag a place in the World Bowl.